should be live, right? Yes, we are. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how to get the the faces so we can see our reactions to it as well. How's it sound, audience? Yep. Let us know, please. All right, we're live. We are hey, live. Jordan, how are you doing? How do we sound? How do we sound? Let us know, please. I'm trying to figure out how to get the, uh... Hmm... Looks like we're good. We'll wait a few more minutes for a couple more people to trickle in. But uh, how are you guys doing tonight? All right, we're all we're all good to go. We're all good to go. Do we sound good, guys? Let us know, please. Please let us know. Awesome, awesome. Thank you guys for joining today. We got one more minute before we uh, get things rolling here. Don't cover the trains. Sid's coming later. Yes, um, we'll get all into that. Um, it's 7 o'clock, so I guess we'll start. Um, again, thank you guys for coming on to the live stream tonight. Me and RJ thought it would be a really cool idea to come together as a community and talk about the brand new catalog. Um, as you can see at the title of the catalog, Lionel is celebrating 120 years. Um, that's a lot of time. It's a lot of time. I do? Yeah. Shoot. That's embarrassing. How do I, how do I, how do I fix it? Which one is it? Go to Lionel's website. Kids are rookie. What are we going to do with them? I don't know, honestly. Just go to Lionel.com. Uh, Sheesh. Shaking my head. I'm going to cut your pay in half. Oh, man. I was ready. I was all ready. Sorry, guys. Good thing you told me. Like, I saw the 120 years, so I was like, okay, that's the catalog. View now. See? Volume 2. That's what we need. There we go. Okay. So that was the cover page. There we go. So as I was saying... Lionel has, um, they're celebrating their 120 years, which as you think of it, that's a lot of time. Um, and we're still very grateful. This company, um, still provides us with, um, really great trains. So me and RJ thought it would be a good idea to come here together tonight, um, as a community and, uh, talk about it. So, um, we're going to have some guests coming later, um, to give their opinion as well. But, um, yeah. so, so the way Sam and I have this figured out is that, we're going to go through the catalog one time, you know, talk to you guys in the chat and you know, just, you know, go page by page and talk about everything. And then once we do that, we're going to invite uh, Sid, Sid's Trains, Matt, Matt Train Lover 9943, and Rail Chief 74 But all of their links to their channels are down in the description, so make sure to check those guys out if you don't know them already. But we're going to have them on later to discuss what they think of the catalog and you know still communicate back and forth with you guys in the chat yep all right so if you're just joining us thank you for coming on um let's go ahead and get rolling here so here is the uh, table of contents so it looks like we got they're starting off um, with uh, legacy steam and diesel and then they worked their way down Sam, have you gotten a chance to look at the catalog yet, or is this your first time looking through it? Um, this is actually my first time looking through it, so I didn't get a chance today. Um, so you're seeing my first reaction, so. Hello, GFW and Steve. Hope you guys are doing well tonight. And they have their timeline uh, through the decades, uh, Lionel's history. Um, very fascinating. All right, so looks like here is the first page. Um, they're introducing their O scale items. And they're kind of showing you all of the different um, features with Legacy, but probably a lot of us already know what that um, includes. So let's get to the good stuff. All right, here we go. First item up on the list. Um, these look 
This look amazing. Yes. Yes. So, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard this before, but we've got uh, four pretty unique paint schemes, considering the fact it only actually ever wore two of these paint schemes. The, uh, the first one there on top is the American Railroad, and I believe Pennsylvania displayed that at some sort of fair. Uh, I want to say the 1964 World's Fair in New York, but I don't think that's right. And then the general Pennsylvania one. And then you have the calendar rendition with that nice looking uh, Pennsylvania Railroad logo on the nose. And then the, uh, the infamous Lionel fantasy paint jobs there with the uh, Tuscan, Tuscan brown. I mean, who doesn't love a good fantasy paint scheme? Um, I mean, this is your your railroad, your layout. You're buying um, the engines for your railroad, so you can choose what you want. Um, I definitely think that's a pretty cool feature that Lionel does. Personally, in my opinion, um, just having that option, you know, to go creative and above and beyond and maybe, you know, stuff like that. So, Yeah, I'd have to agree with you there, RS Trains, uh, Corey. I really like the calendar rendition too with the, uh, the logo up there on the front, but I know that people who had 072 curves had a trouble with the 4444 version of this locomotive. I forget what the, what the model number is that line I'll put out five or six years ago, I think. And so this model it may not look like it, but it's over three feet long in length. It says 072, but I I would I would venture to say that that 072 would be very uncomfortable. So I, I think it's going to be interesting once it comes out how it actually performs in 072. I mean, it's longer than the Vision Line Big Boy, and the Big Boy has problems around 072. Yep. So I, I think it's going to be interesting to see how this performs in 072. It'll definitely be interesting. Um, maybe does Li I'm not sure. Um, does Lionel offer any uh, radius curves bigger than 072? I don't know that off the top of my head, but I'm I don't sure either. Does. If not, um, it'll be very interesting to see if um, Lionel does need to bring out some of these larger curves. Sid's trains um, in the comments, from what I'm looking at, says it needs 084 or bigger. Um, that'd be a pretty safe bet. Yes, definitely. Yeah. But uh, these look amazing. Yeah, I know Atlas makes 099. Uh, but yeah, I think that definitely not going to be able to get away with 072 looking pretty on this. So GFW, in the in the description, it's 36 and a quarter inches long from uh, from the front to the end coupler. So it's it's this is a real big boy. If you uh... yeah, um, I guess the question is <laughs> yeah yep. yep the question is now. I mean, I don't know. Lionel really hit it off with their Niagara. Does this even come close to that, RJ? Someone who might know a little bit more than me. Does this come? I, Does this I come? Don't know, I don't know personally how big the Niagara is, but listening <clears throat> to uh, Ryan Kunkel in the in his uh, live stream presentation okay. on Monday, he said this is the longest and largest model that Lionel has ever produced. So, oh wow! I don't know how much bigger the Niagara this is. I know before this, it was the big boy that was the largest model that line ever made and i think this beats it by three or four inches oh my goodness that's insane uh lionel definitely uh stepping it up here again all right should we go to the next page rj yeah let's go to the passenger cars that uh, cross anchors was talking about okay these look these look nice yeah the south wind so this passenger car set was based off of a Pennsylvania railroad train that went from Chicago to Miami and of course a lot of that wasn't over Pennsylvania railroad trackage so it was shared between railroads um, but I think it's interesting that I believe on this page the OR it might be the next one that they have the like Florida East Coast has like a Pennsylvania style passenger cars um, I think these are really sharp looking cars I think they would go really good with the the Tuscan S1. The fantasy paint scheme, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes, the definitely, scheme. definitely. And Stick then even even those Pullman passenger passenger cars, although they aren't, you know, one hundred percent prototypical, um I'd like to see what colors Lionel puts on them. 
Um, I think a general theme of what I'm going to say is that I, I have trust issues with Lionel putting the correct colors on their items, as we've noticed over the last few years. Um, and, you know, just one shade off is going to make them look like toys. So it'd be interesting to see what, what colors they come in before, you know, somebody purchases them. It's a good thing to consider when buying a really expensive um, passenger set. <laughs> If you're somebody who likes that accurate detail, then um, definitely something to look into. Kind of do your research before you buy. And All right, should we go to the next page, RJ? Yeah, and uh, I just want to thank everybody who's, who's drifting in a little bit late. Thank you so it's much. It's all right. Everyone. Not like, a problem. And uh, Tanky60, uh, oh, thank you guys for joining. It's uh, very much appreciated. Definitely, yes. Um, so this is our video for this week, but we are also releasing the podcast with Greg from the Nassau Lionel Operating Engineers Club on Friday at 7 p.m. Um, just make sure to check it out this Friday. And we got some exciting guests coming up in the near future, so stick around for those as well. So again, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, this is my first time ever reviewing a catalog for that matter, so please stick with me if I say something stupid. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and go on to probably the biggest hit out of this catalog, these legacy 460s that are readily affordable for a lot of people coming into the hobby, um, especially for myself, kind of looking to get into the more um, de highly detailed locomotives and um, kind of exploring what legacy is all about. Um, so um, do you want to tell us about these, RJ, a little bit more? So I will say that I've ordered two, I've already pre-ordered two items from this catalog and one of them's on this page. My first legacy locomotive, my first scale steam locomotive, I pre-ordered the New York Central 460. Um, for those of you who have a little bit of history on this model, Lionel first uh, produced it the first time around five years ago, and it actually had a higher MSRP and didn't have the smoking whistle, which is what I'm thrilled about, the fact that you have a steam locomotive for $600 and it has the whistle steam effect. I'm super pumped for that. That's why I'm all in on this. Um, so the 460 in this style is a New York Central design. So all of the other row names that you see here are unprototypical for you know, their design. But at the end of the day, you know, you take what you can get, especially for some of these uh, smaller row names like Rutland and uh, Texas and Pacific and the uh, Reading Northern. But I see you guys in the comments going over about the, the color issues, you know, Klinger talking about his... Uh, Norfolk Southern C44-9, you know, Red Horse Main, and um, and uh, there's a couple of other you guys. Chat's going. Yep. Definitely, so definitely going. Yeah, we really appreciate it, guys. Thanks yeah, for the support. Too. But I, my, one of my favorite road names besides Long Island is the Southern Railroad, and I wanted to get that Southern Force thing, so. But they can't even get the, the Photoshop color right. And, you know, I think that's going to scare a lot of people from getting that look. And then you also have the Reading uh, 225, which is an actual steam local that still runs, I believe, at the uh, Reading and Northern you know, Heritage Railroad there in Pennsylvania. And even if they get that blue wrong, it's such an iconic locomotive for so many people. People who are going to be buying that locomotive are people who have who've seen the locomotive and if they get that color wrong i it's just it's a lot to a lot to uh if i if i was getting one of those two i definitely want to see the locomotive before i purchased it which is yep. extremely difficult because these are built to order for models by lionel someone's gonna have to be the scapegoat is basically what you're saying um so rj i'm gonna ask you a question which which uh paint schemes are realistic and which ones are not so all of the paint schemes are realistic. The Southern mm -hmm. did have four or six O's that were all green like that. The Texas and Pacific did have that olive green and red cap. And, you know, the Redding and Northern is that all blue color. But um, just in terms of prototypicalness, it's only the New York Central is the only one that's prototypical. The whole design is based off of the New York Central design. Okay, okay. But um just i want to hit one other note about these locomotives yeah sure that uh canadian pacific one okay so i don't know if you guys picked this up but it's actually going to become with it's going to come with in the tender there are magnets and so you can change the road name on the tender 
I believe one of them is actually the Reading and Northern, or maybe it's like the just Reading. I forget the other two. Ryan's and Lionel in their live stream, they brought it up. I should have written it down. But it will change the it ran on a, you know excursions in the 1970s in the late 70s and every railroad that it went on the guy would paint a different road name on the tender so they recreated that on the tender of this 460 which i think is a neat gfw i don't if, if sam zooms in you can see the road number but it's not 630 the southern so, one no, is no, that no, what no, we're talking no, about two. 630 is another steam locomotive at the Tennessee Valley Railroad. Yeah, 947. Yep. I was really hoping that it would be a 630, but I don't know if 630 is even a 460. But I know there's a lot of Rutland guys who are out there that are really excited about this because there aren't too many Rutland scale items that are produced or items in general. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've never heard of them. Well, I know Corey, Corey liked it, but I'm... Yeah, Corey, the, the green is very scary on the Southern 460. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, 630 is a 280. See, I'm still learning stuff every day. See, I don't know much, so this is good for me to really absorb all this information and figure it out. But um, coming from a different perspective, someone who, again, has not bought Legacy at all, and this is, it's kind of out of my price range, but I'm sure with an extra year of saving or two, um, I could get something like this. Um, it could definitely um bring a lot of people into legacy more um and i think that's something that could be um a great thing for lionel and um you know bring a lot of people in as i said before and be a be a game changer is basically what i'm trying to say so uh i view it as is that i was someone who was in that mth rail king price range you know the 300 to 400 dollars and you know, for me, it's kind of scary. Like, oh, now I'm paying, you know, six hundred and fifty dollars for a six hundred and seventy-five dollars for a for a locomotive. But you know, at the end of the day, I was still gonna have to, you know, with MTH going out of business, it was either this or don't get trains. And this locomotive in particular, you know, at a six hundred and seventy-five dollar price point, you're only paying about a hundred dollars more than for a legacy diesel. Locomotive. And there aren't too many MTH steam locomotives that can beat this in price. And I think it's that perfect step for us that are trying to take that extra step towards, you know, a more scale approach. And at the end of the day, it's only, it's, I say only, it's, 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 it's priced well enough to get us into, that, into, you know, that scale legacy. Yep. All right. Should we go to the next page, RJ? <clears throat> next page um, yeah are you finished with your thoughts all right cool the legacy usra 2882 right off the bat the santa fe catches my eye <clears throat> oh, yeah so so the story about these are uh during world war ii the, the railroads were basically consolidated into one and the government decided what what locomotives were given to the, the railroads and so these were built technically built by the government and then given to the different railroads um and also i think interesting note is that we have a harry heike weathered steam locomotive here i think it's been probably five or six years since he last did this for lionel and so you're getting it you can you have the option to get it professionally weathered by one of the you know top guys in the industry but I think it's unfortunate that they aren't making a non-weathered version of the uh, the Norfolk and Western there with the with the cab there on the tender. But we've got we we've got every row name you can think of here. You know, Santa Fe, Baltimore, and Ohio, N and W, Rio Grande. It's all there. And I think there's more. There's more on the next page. All right. Yep, even more. So you know. A lot of options here for a lot of people with different tastes uh, in the hobby. Is the Pennsylvania one prototypical? If my gut says no. I don't is know. My gut right? Probably not. I, if you ask me if that was prototypical to the Long Island Railroad, I, I can tell you it was no. 
but I'm a pen, I'm a Pensy fan by proxy because the Pennsylvania Railroad owned the Long Island Railroad. Um, maybe the Pennsylvania had one or two, but Google would be much better at answering that question than I would. I agree, uh, Tanky60. He says the Santa Fe is lit. I definitely agree. Um, is there even is there even more schemes or is that it? Um, that's it. But okay. yeah, I hear you, Clinger, that it would take me four years to save up for one. It's uh, there are quite pricey models, but they they sure are fascinating. All these little yeah, I, intricate parts and details moving. All right. Well, thank you for stopping in, Clinger. Uh, it was nice seeing you in the chat. Um, yeah, Tanky60 says he thinks that Pennsylvania had two of them. That sounds about right. <clears throat> and Corey, I, I hear you. I don't like that green gro uh, the green gloss there on the uh, the Pennsylvania. Well, another thing I'm scared about lying now potentially messing up. The Pennsylvania Y... All right, Tim's train says the Pennsylvania Y3 is correct. They had about 10 of them. Uh, that they that they got from the N and W, which makes sense because uh, the N and W was a subsidiary of the Pennsylvania. And uh, GFWX, what's the price of the weathered one? I think if you go back to the last page, we can. Yeah, just a second. Sorry, Sam. Right there. No, it's on the uh, first page. Oh, uh, the first page? I am on the first page. Right here, uh, weathered. Right there. Yeah. I guess I guess the MSRP is uh, yeah, it's twenty fifty. But I'm sure if you go through a good line of dealer, it's probably it's probably a few hundred under two thousand. I'll let you guys uh, read that little bio there. Um, but yeah. So uh, on the topic of incorrect paint schemes, we're looking at Harry uh, Heike's bio here for those of you who might know the last lionel run of the nnw 611 they got the maroon color on the, <clears throat> on the locomotive completely wrong and so lionel actually contracted out to to harry here to repaint all the models for the people who wanted their models repainted oh my goodness talk about a favor yeah well i'm sure he's getting paid a pretty penny it seems lionel well, yeah I mean, Turn all those uh, locomotives there. Hmm. So I guess my question is: We always talk about, you know, I hope Lionel doesn't mess this one up. What goes through that process, and why is it seem to be a common occurrence? So there, you know, people make up a lot of excuses, um, but at the end of the day, it, it, it's quality control. They, I I know MTH has. Somebody boots on the ground in China checking all these products as they come off the uh, the assembly line. <clears throat> but um, you know, they show up to, you know, Lionel tells them what color to make it, and then the factory in China paints it, you know, a color, and you know, they box it up, and it gets sent to the United States, and you know, at that point, it's pretty much too late to do anything about it. Yeah, Crossacred Rivera said it perfectly. A bad product manager are not doing their job well. Yep. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the USRA Light 282. Um, as a resident of Indiana, uh, the Monon is sticking out to me right now. Um, looks pretty sweet. So two huge notes on this page is that you actually have two functioning steam locomotives that line yes. is making. Yes, yep. So my personal favorite, if I had, if I won the lottery tomorrow and had unlimited money to spend, the first thing I would be buying is that Southern Southern 405. Yep. So for those of you who may not know the Southern 4501, it is down and in operation at the uh, Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, my girlfriend, she lives about a half an hour from it, but I haven't get to, I haven't had the chance to see it in person, but it's, it's at the very probably top of my list of steam locomotives that I want that are at Long Island. And then the Grand Trunk and Western right to the left of the Southern 4501. That also, I know was at least in, sir, in uh, excursion operations. I don't know if it still is, but at one point it did. And then you have some other great road names. There.
there's a uh, zoomed in picture of the uh, Southern 4501. Um, every uh, oh, go ahead, RJ. And you know these models come with the smoking whistle, which it seems like a new standard on Lionel steam locomotives. I think all the new the four six O's, the Y threes, and these have smoking whistles. The S ones they have a smoking. Uh, uh, they don't have a smoking whistle, but they have another smoking thing in replace of it because the whistle, because the S ones didn't have a whistle. But got forty five, yeah, and the forty five oh one is in the current colors too. I saw a lot of people were hoping that the forty five oh one would be in its original green livery, but I think it looks better in the black. Yeah, and Tim's trains points out Lionel do correct tender for forty five oh one. Uh, for those of you who may not know the story behind that, Lionel did a rendition of the 4501 a few years ago, and they completely botched the tender on it. It wasn't prototypical, and I know that turned a lot of people off from buying the, the locomotive in the first place. Yeah, the previous line, GFW says the previous Lionel issue was done in green. Um, MTH, their last rendition was done in black. But who knows, maybe Lionel's next rendition after this will be back in the green, and they'll just keep alternating. Yep, uh, RJ has um, been sharing um, information with me on the Southern 4501, and it's definitely growing on me. Um, if I, I again, if I had to choose, it'd be uh, either Monon or Southern. There. Don't lie, you choose Monon. Well, yeah, and obviously Monon would come first, but probably the Southern would be second. But also, uh, you know, Lionel making those smaller row names, which I like to see now that MTH is kind of leaving the market. You have a, uh, a Georgia. Uh, down there at the bottom left. You even have a Wabash. Lehigh and Hudson, Wabash, and the uh, and the Frisco. But yeah, those are I, a great variety of row names. There. I hope these come back in a few years when I have enough money to uh, purchase the forty five oh one. Because that that is that looks like a beautiful model. Why choose? Take both. One day when I uh, win the lottery, GFW. <laughs> All right, so uh, as we leave the Steam section, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, that's about all I have to say. Um, I think it was, even though it was short, um, we do have the largest scale locomotive coming out. Um, and we have a lot more, I would say, um, smaller road names being listed, um, which, as we pointed out just a second ago, that's a, that's a great thing. And, you know... Um, and I think the last thing was the um, affordable, more affordable steam locomotives that were in Legacy. So a lot of, um, a lot of good points there. Anything else you want to add, RJ? Um, just on the note that there weren't a lot of models. I think on the one hand, you also this is a volume two catalog, so <clears throat> you had a lot in the first catalog. I think you had like twenty something Vision Line steam locomotives that came out in the first catalog. So you got to. And then second off, you also have the virus, so I'm sure that affected the length of the catalog. But still a great variety and selection. Um, and before we move on to the next section, Tanky60, what do you guys think about the Daylight remake? Um, are you talking about the Vision Lines from the last catalog? Are you talking about the cap forwards in this one? Clarify that. Could you? That would be appreciated. But with that, let's move on to the move on to the diesels. My question is, what is the history behind the um, E7s here painted in the city of Los Angeles? Does uh, anyone know that? Probably, probably that they were they were used that the E7s used on Union Pacific's route to the city of Los Angeles used trains painted like that i'm not exactly sure of the entire history of it okay i don't i don't either um uh, but i it's a think it's a really sharp paint scheme it's a really uh niche paint scheme definitely eye-catching to say the least which is good to uh see and uh, a lot of people talking about how they like the atlantic coastlines i have to agree with you there those look really sharp um the purple and silver. A lot of Atlantic coastline in this catalog. A lot of Monon, which is it's really good to see. Go Monon at GFW. 
I also think it's interesting to note that uh, the Atlantic coastline comes with two A units, but the UP comes with an A and B unit. And then you also have the Super Base B units, which um, I recently got the chance to see a Super Base B unit in person, and the sounds that come out of the, that at, out of that thing are enough to drown out several other locomotives. So those are nice. Um, I just it, these prices, especially for those Super Base B units. I mean, I think retail they uh, through hobby stores they go for like three. Those Super Base units are going for like three hundred and seventy five dollars. And uh, I can definitely see that being a uh, bottom level clearance item. In Why is that? Because it's just an add on. I hobby stores are definitely going to over purchase them. Okay. Because it's built to order, but I I don't see anybody really paying three hundred and seventy five dollars for a super base unit when you're already having that super long consist with a lot of power. I, yes. I mean, that's just that's me a good personally. point. I don't like when you go to like clearance sections on train on hobby stores websites. It's always the B units. B units. What is the super base unit? All right. So super base unit is basically it just has an extra loudspeaker on the inside of it. Um, you, you know, along with the smoke units, and it may have also additional motors inside of it. I'm not a hundred percent sure. But I know it's it's meant to give an amplified sound to. So Sid says, "Oh, they will, RJ. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Tanky sixty. Yeah, I'd pay four hundred for those, you know, A units, but I wouldn't pay four hundred dollars for just that one B unit there. Nope. Okay, so Tim Strain says the City of Los Angeles E units were used on UP City of LA passenger trains. Usually, a, B, uh, UP would run an A B B consist." of LA, which I which is nice. They yep. allow you to recreate that. Interesting. Thank you for that comment. I don't know anything, Thanks. so um, I'm being well informed this evening. All right. Um, I'm just gonna say that I love the style of diesel locomotives, yeah. E7s, F F3s, F7s, whatnot. Um, all of those, even the shark noses, sometimes. Um, I, those are my favorite kind of diesels. So when I look at diesels, I look at these models first, like these style of diesels. So we'll go ahead and go to the next page. We got even more paint schemes. Um, the one that sticks out to me is the uh, light gray uh, New York Central E7 set at the bottom. Um, and these paint schemes looks like you get the super base unit, and it just has two engines, the A and A sets on these. Yeah, so these are the same from the last page. You just have, you know, yep. Pennsylvania and New York Central paint schemes. Um, I think it's interesting that they included a single stripe Pennsylvania uh, Super Base B unit there um, when the two models are five stripes. I think just an interesting touch because the single stripes were used almost exclusively on freight service, I believe. And um, I guess Lionel made a previous model of something like this, which they figured they could throw in. On that consist, but I'm curious as to why they did the single strike there. Yeah, Ethan, I have to agree with you. I think these are some of the sharpest locomotives that uh that are in this catalog. Definitely. Um again, like I said before, that the New York Central at the bottom, um, is just is really eye catching. Um is that a fantasy paint scheme? I believe it is. I watched a snippet of the live stream Lionel did, and I don't remember exactly what he said. Um, I want it. I like part of me wants to say that that's an actual paint scheme, but I think they were just painted up to resemble the the 20th century limited passenger cars. Okay, I wasn't sure. I'm definitely picking RJ's brain tonight. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm. I'm really being tested. I thank you, especially Tim there in the comments for helping me out. Definitely. Yep. Thank you guys, appreciate it. I don't know anything, so um, I'm just uh, running. Tim, I do. Tim, I too have no life, so I flood myself with stray knowledge. So you're not alone. There. This, so the podcast is meant to bring all of us together. So yeah. we have uses to our useless train knowledge. Yes, exactly. I can. Um, I don't know anything about railroad history in general as much as some of the other guys here. So it's great that we're all coming together. And, you know, just talking trains tonight, really appreciate it. Um, this is what this channel uh, is 
built on honestly that's the goal that me and rj had when we created it um so we can grow and expand so again thank you guys for coming on tonight greatly appreciate it um and let's get back to uh looking at some more trains all right before we change the page yeah the lego geek uh he asks what's the light yellow and dark yellow stripes on the pennsylvania piece so the Pennsylvania Railroad had two different paint schemes they used on their diesel and electric locomotives. One is the five stripe and the other one is the single stripe. So the, the darker ones that you see, those there it's five individual five individual stripes. And then the, the dark the lighter one is one single stripe. And somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but the single stripe was used almost exclusively by Freight services the Pennsylvania Railroad did, and the five stripes were used on passenger services, just to distinguish the, the engines. But I don't know why Lionel chose to do a single stripe here. If I had to guess, it's to go with the previous one of a look. And he sixty acts. What would you guys think about them coming out with more Commodore Vanderbilt trains based on all the different trains that ran his railroad? I mean, I'd like to see Lionel come back with the Commodore Vanderbilt. I think it's been over 20 years since they last did one. Uh, MTH was really uh, trying to hold down the Commodore Vanderbilt there in the Rail King line. So it's interesting to see what will happen with those with those models. E, all right, Cross Anchorage Railroad said E7 units had a single stripe, E8 units had the five stripe, but never ordered the E8B units. Okay. All right, that makes sense to me. And Tim's train says the New York Central paint scheme used on the bottom E7 is correct. When the 1948 21st Century Limited came out, the E7s were painted like that. They were repainted later to the darker. So, all right, I'm going to take that on one, that one as a victory. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. All right, so I feel good. If I ever buy that in the future, I know it's uh, it was actually a... Um, functional and the uh paint scheme was correct all right so here we have some passenger cars that would probably match those trains that we're talking about right now um again very sharp from kind of what we're seeing here and we do have some baggage cars and um what do you think rj um certainly some interesting things you're definitely going to get a variety here which is which was typical of a lot of these trains that went through various different railroads I believe the New York Central Southwestern Limited was from New York to somewhere in the South, so it wasn't exclusively a New York Central train. Um, just one interesting note that I forgot to bring up is that the new the B60 baggage cars and the o RPO cars, they are they're not like thirty dollars more expensive than the first one of them, and nobody really knows why. Um, I think it's just because they decided to go all metal. Yeah, the frame of the plastic. So, um, GFW Trains asked, are these cars 21 inches? And I pulled up the features here, and it looks like the length on... Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry, wrong one. Sorry, I'm still learning how to function. 21-inch passenger cars. I think you have uh, Yeah, they are 21 inches. Yep, sorry about that, GFW, but yes... These at the bottom are 21, and the ones at the top are 18. So, and they the ones at the top turn 054, the ones on the bottom turn 054 as well. Um, I'm gonna ask probably a stupid question, but do 21 inch passenger cars commonly go around 054, or is that something new? I I don't know. I'm sure that I think Cross Anchors Railroad he might have a couple of. Inch passenger cars or a GFW. Okay. I think your EP passenger cars are 21 inches, but I don't. I don't know. I okay. only have 048 curves, so I don't even. Know. <laughs> um, I've always had an interest in passenger cars, and I've always been kind of interested in getting some um, more highly detailed passenger cars. So I always just kind of just kind of look at the information, um, just kind of see if anything changes. But I don't. I don't remember the. Minimum curve. Yeah, some of you guys were talking in the comments about the paint scheme, and I just think it's another case of Lionel's bad photoshopping skills. It's just like the uh, Southern 460. Hopefully they don't look that bluish in the... 
in the, I don't I hope they would not look that bluish in the future when they are produced. So yeah, it looks like yeah, it looks yep, like twenty one yep. inch passenger cars are not gonna go around O fifty fours. Oh go ahead. I think it's just another one of those cases where, you know, yeah, it'll go around O fifty four, but you need four inches of leeway on either side of the tracks for it to go around. Yep, Cross Anchored Railroad said they will go, but it, it'll be a very tight fit. Yep, definitely not prototypical there um, if you're going for that on your layout. All right, let's go to the next page here because um, we do have some very exciting things coming up in this live stream as well. We're having a couple guests um, give their take on the new catalog. All right, so here we go. We're looking at some more E7s. We got Rock Island, which I personally, for me, I have not seen Rock Island um in a long time um and i've never seen that uh, southern pacific paint scheme either so it looks like we got some interesting things here rj do you have anything to add so lionel hinted at the at the you know, southern pacific and the two southern pacifics there in their last catalog uh, as most some of you guys may remember they made they made gs warriors i believe in these two paint schemes um which weren't prototypical, but they also did the matching passenger cars for those steam locomotives, and they said, wait, hold on, you'll get more prototypical stuff in the future, uh, and here, here you go here. Um, personally, I'm not a fan of these paint schemes, but I know that all three of them on the page are prototypical. I don't know how you don't like that Rock Island paint scheme. I think the Rock Island looks pretty sharp, but there's two Southern Pacifics. Yeah, I, I want to know who at Southern Pacific approved those when you had the daylight uh, the daylight scheme there on a back burner. Hmm. All right, should we go to the next page? Yeah. All right, and here's some passenger cars you can add. Um, Golden State. Yeah. So this goes with that second. These were first cataloged in the, the last in the volume one catalog. So yeah, these these aren't these are probably the only things in the catalog that aren't new. This I might sound stupid for saying this, but this reminds me of the Texas special red color. It does to me too. Okay. I didn't know if it was a different shade of red or anything like that. Yeah, these these really remind me of the uh, Texas Special ones that um, I don't know when they came out or whatever, but um, I don't know. I've just always found those passenger cars very sleek and um, very interesting. So these remind me of that. That's all I have to say. So the Rock Island would have also pull, helped pull the SP train across the country. I didn't know that. That's actually really interesting. Did Tim say that? Uh. I last first one I saw was GFW who said that. Okay. Somebody up first. Interesting. That's very cool. Hmm. All right. Next page. And hold on. If, before oh. you switch the page. I'll go back. GFW. I forgot to point this out. I see GFW did in the uh, in comments here that the. Uh, if you if you go down to the uh, the second two pack down there on the page, they're actually marked Pennsylvania Railroad. So these would have originated in, you know somewhere along the Pennsylvania Railroad network and then connected up with the Rock Island, who would have carried it to the SP. A lot of information right there to absorb, especially for someone who doesn't know anything. That's. Uh, Tim, I've seen those those K-Line Golden State passenger cars in person, and they're beautiful. Um, I'm sure they won't compare with you know the 21 inch version from Lionel, but the, the the original K-Line ones, those are some fantastic passenger cars. Tim says it's been about 15 years since an accurate Golden State train has been done. Rest in peace, K-Line. Well, hopefully, Tim, um, we can change your mind. Uh, these trains by Lionel will uh, fix you up. All right. Uh, did you want to add anything else? Sorry, I cut you off again. Zoom is notorious for doing that. I'm sorry. No, and um, I think we can probably just go past the next page too because it's okay. actually the same thing, just yep. with a different paint scheme. 
Okay, so this is the part of the live stream by Lionel that I actually paid, I was actually able to catch. Um, so it sounds like they're redoing these again, um, and the, what is it, the shell is actually going to be plastic instead of die cast because um, a apparently people had problems in the past with them or something of the sorts. So looks like we have a Bethlehem, BNSF, Norfolk Southern, Pennsylvania, UP, and apparently, um, there's a graffitied one as well that Lionel had a artist take care of. So, so these are so. I'm sure most of you guys might know the original uh, Vision Line Gen sets. You know, I see Sid with the zinc rod comment there. Um, so now that you have the plastic shells, it now has two motors, so it's it's more powerful. Um, the Beth, uh, I know the Pennsylvania River one, that's obviously a fantasy scheme. But, um, you know, for all you prototypical guys out there, I'm about to ruin this for you. If the Lionel puts the headlights in the nose for the UP and NS, they're unprototypical. So, uh, you know, you can keep that on your back burner. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ruin it even more. They have to use the same tooling um, for production reasons. So 95% chance that they're going to be there. Um, and I don't know if you caught this part during the Lionel stream, but the graffiti on the Union Pacific model is actually based off of graffiti that's on the yes. same yep. exact locomotive in Thank Los you. Angeles. Yep. I forgot to add that. Sorry. Yeah. So they, they had their artist in-house recreate that locomotive. Like that. And um, it's a couple ticks more in price, but uh, I think it's fascinating if you like that graffiti. If you like the graffiti sort of thing. 90% of trains are... Uh, graffiti, so pretty accurate. Here we have some legacy GP7s. The ninety percent of the diesels that I have in my collections are GP7s, so I definitely look at these as well. And I really like that Santa Fe. Oh my goodness, that is probably my favorite Santa Fe paint scheme out of all of them. Um, the yeah, the the blue and the the yellow here. A uh, fun, uh, fun little tidbit here. Um, I live kind of close to a kind of a local yard, and uh, some trains come in. And every once in a while, it's only when uh, we have corn, and so it's like a corn disposal where um, a train backs up all the hoppers and they fill them and they bring them out. And so they have a, I think it's a GP thirty eight um, of the Santa Fe paint scheme in that color. So. I never see it in action because it's barely used, but um, it's definitely, I've seen it back there. So, all right, back to the catalog. Um, you definitely get some uh, interesting road names in this book. One that sticks out to me is the Main Central. And you get everything in two different road numbers. Uh, Main Central, that's a very underproduced road name. Not as popular as some of the others. Yeah, GFW. I don't. If somebody doesn't like that, uh, that Santa Fe Jeep, uh, they get voted off the island first. Um, and I, I like that Seaboard one. I have no idea why. It, it kind of looks like a slug. Like an airport. <laughs> All right, here. Let's uh, see if there's any more paint schemes. Oh, we're going straight to the uh, shark noses. Oh, Santa. Santa Fe. And Baldwin, I have never seen anything like that. So the Baldwin one, and I'm sure Tim Tim's typing right now to correct me, which I'm very thankful for. But uh, um, so when Baldwin first made them, they painted it up like that when they were demonstrating it to the different railroads. Uh, what 800 Clyde said, "Hey guys, two numbered Santa Fe lashed up would be awesome." Yes, I agree with you there, Clyde. And then. Talk about underproduced road names. The, uh, oh my goodness. What is it? The, e, the EJ and E, which somehow has gotten a surge of products by both MTH and Lionel over the last two years. And I think even Menards made up the boxcar with their road name on it. But uh, holy smokes, they look like Tropicana train. Uh, Tim says that they are correct. The EJ and... Uh, I don't even know this railroad, to be honest. I'm sorry, guys. I'm probably killing everybody I in the chat. I I think it's what's like Wisconsin. I'm sure somebody else knows where they're from, but I, I'm thinking like Upper Midwest. Um, yeah, ours, uh, our uh, Corey. I hear you. I don't know why they didn't do a uh, D and H 
but I wouldn't be surprised if you see a uh, hobby store uh, do a custom run of them. You know, maybe something like Nicholas Smith Trains do a custom run of the DNA Sharks. Now that Lionel's producing the tool length. So it looks like I zoomed in on the logo here, and it says Chicago. Um, and it says Outer Belt, Chicago Outer Belt, and then EJ and Erie. So. Yeah, it's Illinois. Okay. GFW, Elgin, Illinois. Julia Thank you. Illinois. Thank you. So, uh, I'm assuming that um, I'm assuming that a lot of people will find these um, lower road names or what less well known road names very interesting. I have I've never heard of that until now. So. Yeah. I feel like five years ago we would have never seen this from Lionel. No. But uh, now that you know, MT just sort of leaving that uh, yeah, unique road name market. You see that uh, Lionel's trying to take, trying to uh, get a piece of that action. All right, next page, and we have um, any paint scheme that you can dream of here. Um, what? Sam, I want to hear you try and pronounce that first one. Um, let me zoom in here. Monongalia. Um, Monongahela. Monongahela. It's a uh, Pennsylvania. I believe it's Pennsylvania. Road okay. The uh, Monongahela River. Uh, but yeah, we also have some great paint schemes here. You have the New York Central, and then. The real, uh, the real controversial Pennsylvania ones, because if you ask some people, they were originally delivered with the six axle. Some people say the four axle. They didn't get the stripes right. They weren't painted right. Who knows? Uh, they look good to me. Um, I love those. Uh, Corey says he loves those New York Central ones. Yeah, those look real sharp, but... My favorite of all the shark noses is, of course, the fantasy scheme down there at the bottom. Oh, you, you Just know, a second. Yeah, I, you couldn't tell by my accent now I'm from uh, Pittsburgh. I'd love to come visit them one day. There's the front. For some reason, I can't zoom in in the middle. So. Because uh, probably it's between two pages. Yep. But, you know, you actually have shark nose, shark noses. <laughs> um, you're created there by lying out. But um, you know, I I those that's a fun uh, paint job that Lionel did there. I'll wait for Tim says he'll wait for lightning stripe sharks to come back out again. Yeah, I'm really surprised that Lionel didn't do this time around too. So I was looking back at previous Lionel catalogs, and a lot of this stuff was produced six, like five, six, seven years ago. So I guess we're looking at a five to seven year wait for the uh, next run of shark noses. All right. Um, do you want to, I have never seen this. Um, can, can you tell me about it? I didn't, I didn't know what it was until I saw it in the catalog and I Googled it. Okay. Um, but it, it was an experimental uh, train design by the New York Central. I ran, I did want to say Cleveland. It ran somewhere around Cleveland to Detroit or something like that. Um, the locomotive was kind of like a shark nose, but it wasn't this exact locomotive. Um, if you look up pictures of it, it was actually much shorter than the average shark nose. But I have to agree with GFW here. Uh, that It's a beautiful model. If I had the money, I, I would own this. To me, it kind of looks like a Blue Angel, like the uh, the, the uh, fighter planes. But um, um, how much is that set? Uh, Axe the Lego Geek. Um, oh, here, say, just give me a second. Sorry, I'm a slacker. Retail. Yeah, I really like these. It's much different. So it's it's nine hundred dollars, or you go through a good hobby store. But um, I th it's really it's really neat to see a non black, gray, and white New York Central. The Pens All right, Tim's train says the Pennsylvania Railroad had the RF-16 trucks, which came with a four axle truck. They also had passenger sharks, the the BP-20, which had six axles. He knows everything. I knew. 
Tim, I wish I had half the knowledge you did. All right, let's go ahead and get on to the next page here because we have some very um, exciting stuff in store for you guys later. Here we got some sets. I'm sure Al's going to like this uh, P and L and E. Um, Bergen Lake Erie. Um, if I wasn't getting the 460 and the other thing I'm getting on later in the catalog, I definitely would have been all in on the Southern set with the GP and these, uh, these box cars. I think it's a uh, really sharp set. You're getting some, some great freight cars that haven't been produced in a while. Kind of a dumb question. Are these all marketed with Bluetooth? I believe, I think so. I think that, um, just a second. I can look it up. P L and E, that's me. So GFW, I'm pretty sure that all these come with Bluetooth. Um, uh, yeah, it's on a different page, but all these come with Bluetooth. And I know that all of the new steam locomotives, they now have a new board in it. So that included on every single yeah, right component, here. five different whistles. And you can change the pitch of the five different whistles. So, you know, you can get the exact whistle that you want. Which, I'm going to add something here. Um, I have the Presidential Mikado, and that's one of the features. Um, and that's my favorite feature. Um, I I love the deep the deep whistle, um, so I always have it on the lowest setting. So, all right, I'm just going to add that. Um, GFW, I would make Sam say that name there, but uh, I can't nope. say it myself, so I'm not going to make him say it because I can't say it. Nope, not going to. I already, I already got the other one wrong. So you were close. That's close. Better than Nassau the other day. <laughs> Hello, Nate. Thanks for joining in. Um, you got more passenger cars here. You've got another Penn Central in both maroon, so you can think of that as an ex Pensy baggage car. The uh, Penn Central green. And a Reindeer Express baggage car. Um, they didn't make any other Reindeer Express uh, passenger cars in this catalog, so it kind of makes you wonder where this one came from, if they forgot to include something, but uh, it's there if you want it. I guess a spoof on the uh, REA. Wi-Fi theater cars. Wi-Fi theater cars. I'm still waiting for a Lionel to do this in Amtrak's pink colors. I almost got the opportunity to ride on it. If it's virus. That's a story for a different time. Um, but yeah, you've got, uh, what is it, Norfolk, I can, uh, Kansas City Southern, oh, Santa Fe, uh, Norfolk Southern again, Southern Pacific, Chicago Northwestern, and uh, I can't exactly see that one down there at the bottom, but uh, I think it's BNSF, but all those are... There's some great cars. All right, so GFW asks, what is the Reindeer Express? That is a good question because I have no idea. All right, Tim. Lionel leaked it in their Train World live stream a few months ago, and I think the purpose of it is to be a more prototypical answer to like a Christmas train than the Polar Express, but they didn't make any other products that said Reindeer Express in this catalog. I think they might have forgot it or something like that. But, um, yeah, so it's just, a, it's like a modern, it's not a modern, it's a different version instead of having a Polar Express scale Christmas passenger train. But, uh, who knows, maybe it's something else down the line that line is going to make. It's kind of, kind of odd for them just to offer that one car in the catalog. Yeah, definitely someone out of place. All right, so as we're, we're kind of moving on here to rolling stock, um, the first thing that sticks out on the page again is the Monon boxcar. Again, um, Lionel really coming out with these um, smaller road names um, and offering even some rolling stock to go with your brand new Monon engine. So, uh, RJ, what do you have to say? Um, first off, I want to talk, uh, I touch on those covered gondolas. I think it's been like eight years since Lionel made those. Uh, those are really fascinating. None in a road name that I particularly enjoy. If there was, I would pick one up. But uh, those are great cars. I love seeing those back in the lineup again. Uh, the round hat, the roof hatch box cars. This is my other pre-order. Um, so 
as I as I was talking about earlier, I'm a huge fan. I'm not a huge fan, but I'm a fan of the Southern Railroad. Railroad. Um, and so these boxcars had all different uses on the various railroads. So the Central of Georgia used this to transport clay from the clay mines to factories. Uh, the Chicago Northwestern, there at the bottom left, it was used to transport uh, wheat, wheat and barley to the uh, breweries. And if you actually look at the door of the boxcar, it has the Miller Lite logo, uh, the Miller Lite logo etched in on the boxcar door. And all of these cars have very typical uh, doors to what they have. So if you see on the Chicago Northwestern, it has a smaller door than on the mm -hmm. southern one. But the reason why I actually ordered pre-ordered the Southern Boxcar is that Southern Railroad used these to transport chemicals to and from paper factories. And uh, to bring up my girlfriend again, if you watch my video, she lives not too far from an actual paper factory off of the old Southern Main Line through East Tennessee, which the you know Southern would switch in and out cars. So more than likely, that actual boxcar in real life passed by her house many times. So uh, I pre-ordered one of them, but they, for some reason, they're they're kind of a new link from what I know. Um, they've made the box cards before, but it's the first time they can have root hatches, and they're super expensive. I don't feel like dropping one hundred and seventy dollars on freight cars. But um, and uh, GFW, I do know what Monon is. Uh, I'm not a fan of the Hoosier line. But, oh my uh, gosh! <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I wish. I don't know. If, all of you guys know about this, but the uh, the podcast Notch Six they did a custom run of Monon box cars, but uh, they during uh, I want to say the seventies, some uh, students from Purdue in the middle of the night went out and repainted the N in the middle there, so it says Moron, and the Monon actually like rolled it around for a couple weeks until they got around to repainting it, and they did a custom run of these Monon box cars that took Moron, and uh, I wish I picked one of those up. Here we're moving on to some hundred ton hopper cars. Looks like um, they might come in two packs. And we got Monon again for all yeah, the Monon. Monon. You gotta pre-order at least one of these Monon cars. I'm, man. There's one. You know, there's one other one coming up later in the catalog. Oh, good. I can get three uh, Monon pieces. All these freight cars the line I was offering this time around. I don't know what it is. Maybe they have more die cast metal in them, but the prices are really high. Uh, I mean, these PS2 hoppers make the Atlas one seem like a bargain. Uh, you know, that's kind of scary. I mean, you get some great rodents here. You get some great rodents here, you know, the Central Soya. But I believe the, the orange one there. But, um, yeah, those, that's a heavy price to pay for just, you know, two, two uh, coal hoppers right there. Oh, not. Another thing I want to I wanna add, um... I see the CSX hopper cars all the time. Um, just saying. I actually a uh, rail fan for the first time the other day. Um, I'm breaking them down, guys. So I was, I finished my workout and I went to the gas station to get some chocolate milk uh, with a mask and everything of the sorts. But anyways, I was out to my car and I heard a train coming, so I waited a couple minutes. And it was CSX auto carrier train, so I'm I I'm slowly getting into different aspects of the hobby here. So, all right, next next page here. We got bay window cabooses and some uh, flat cars here. I really like the. Uh, really like, go ahead. Um. So if you actually look at you know uh, for these box cars, they have a general safety theme. So you have the chassis system where it says safety. Um, the Conrail one, that's actually lettered for Northeastern Division, so if you're, you're uh, New England guys up there, that might be interesting to have. Um, the New York Central, that also says, you know, safety. And then the Southern Pacific one, the white caboose down there at the right, is actually Railroad Police. So it's, it's not even technically a caboose, which uh, I find pretty interesting. Tim's train says RJ twists Sam's hand hard enough, or arm hard enough. Sorry. Corey, we need to go back in time when a set costs twenty three dollars. That's that's what I'm looking for. But um, if I had to get one of those, I'd, I'd get the L and N one. But um, 
Those are those are some really nice caboose's. A little pricey, but uh, really nice caboose's. No smoking unit and no cameras. Just your normal cabooses. And uh, now we're back to the standard O line. Um, there it is. There is it. There it is, you people. More Monon. Let's get in the chat. Monon. Monon. Everyone type Monon right now. But anyways, um, again, thank you guys for the 13 people who are watching tonight. Greatly appreciate it. We got some more stuff coming up for you guys. This is a really long um, kind of catalog review and podcast session. So Yeah, and it's nice just being able to it is. with everybody there in the chat. It definitely is. And everyone's typing mode on. Even Sydney's train's got in on it. Yes, let's go. Thank you, Sid. Awesome. All right, cool. All right, um, here we go to – oh, go ahead. Okay. You Sorry. Know, I just want to go back for a second. I just yep. want to talk about something. Not a problem. So as <clears> I'm <throat> sure most of you guys know, this is Lionel's answer to Menards. <laughs> you guys are going crazy with the Monon in the chat. Yes. But um, um, I really like the, those Pennsylvania ones. But I don't know if you guys saw on my channel, I did a review of of the uh, new boxcars that came out. From the, you know, Lion and L Standard O. And um, I, I'm not a huge fan of them. I might pick up the Pennsylvania one. Um, that Monagahela caboose is very good looking, but um, other than that, I'm kind of mixed. I have mixed feelings about it. I certainly, personally, I would not pre-order one of these. No, I definitely wait until they're out in hobby stores after a couple years. So, all right, let's go ahead and work towards wrapping things up here. <laughs> what are you laughing at now? You got more people saying Monon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I started something. You did, and you're paying the consequences right now, RJ. I'm mad there wasn't any Long Island in this catalog. I heard that there was going to be a it was going to be a Pennsylvania New York Central catalog, and I don't get any Long Island out of it. All right, let's go ahead and look at Line Chief here. I'm actually a little bit interested in this. Um, we have the cab forwards, um, very interesting train, um, and then we have the GP sevens. We have Atlantic Coast Line. Um, which actually looks really cool. Um, MKT, Missouri, Kansas, and Texas, Rock Island, and the Baltimore and Ohio. And then in the cab forwards, we have the Daylight Scheme, Southern Pacific, Southern Pacific Lines, and that, oh, that looks to be... Anything you want to add, RJ, here? So, the Line Master cab forwards, I, I'm just... I don't understand. I, Lionel shooting themselves in the foot with this LC, LC 2.0, whatever you want to call it, Line Master series. So in the Volume 1 catalog, they did the Articulate, they did the uh, Allegheny. And in the, at that same time when that was coming out, MTH uh, in their Rail King line just did a run of the Allegheny, which is a $700 cheaper model, and you're basically getting the same thing. But maybe a few less details on the Rail King model. And then they decided to do the cap forwards here. And MT Rail King, uh, their, their Rail King cap forwards were just released to dealers. So everybody who's looking for a semi-scale, more affordable cap forward, all of a sudden now, I mean, they already have one. So unless they're waiting for a Lionel L1, um, I, I don't understand why, why they did that. And then... The LC plus uh, LC two GP sevens. This is Lionel uh, Lionel's answer to the Rail King. Uh, yep. Through the hobby stores, they're going for like three hundred and thirty dollars, which is what a Rail King diesel is costing you. Whether you think that's a good value value or not, that's your opinion. But um, I don't think you get anywhere near the realism you get the Rail King model as you do. You get a lot more realism in an MTH Rail King model than you do the Lionel model. That's just my opinion. Again, um, RJ is twisting my arm and telling me to uh, get uh, MTH um, to kind of see what it was all about. And I'm very interested in doing that. I'm um, kind of comparing Lion Chief and Rail King because um, when I was kind of looking for something with more sound and prototypicalness and such like that, I went to Lion Chief. Um, I didn't really think of MTH at all. So it'll be interesting once I get that and kind of compare the two. All right, let's move on here. We have a Chesapeake and Ohio Lion Chief set. So the only note that I'll include in this, and I actually got this from, uh, from uh, a 
I want to say it's either Sid or uh, Matt's video. But um, so shout out to you guys um, if you're watching. But so Nickel Plate Road 765 did a it dressed up as Chesapeake in Ohio as a Chesapeake in Ohio picture and wore this number 2765. So this is really just a, a it's a Nickel Plate 765. Um, uh, ready to run set, which is uh, it's a nice thing to see. I think this is a pretty nice starter set here. And we have your assorted box cars, um, and it looks like uh, personal box cars. Um, you can kind of add your own pictures and stuff like that. I haven't seen personalized box cars in a long time. I don't know about you, RJ. Um, I know why I've been trying to do that uh, a lot more recently. Um, one thing to note, made in the USA, so uh, always good to support products that are made in the US of A. And uh, I'm sure our friend Steve, he's looking at that Angela Trotta Thomas box car. I know he's a big fan of her artwork, so you have another Angela Trotta Thomas box car there. Um, just one other note I want to hit, um, the Katie Shelley box car. Um, if you just Google her name real quick, uh, it's actually quite, uh, quite a fascinating story about her. Um, that's worth a you know the couple minute read that it is. So I encourage all you guys to look that up. All right. So Tim says back in 1993, that's when 765 wore the uh, the Chesapeake and Ohio uh, 2765. So thank you, Tim. Again, thank you, Tim. <laughs> all right. Here we have some accessories. It looks like we have a fireworks store that is actually um, exploding. Yeah. Um... I think it goes into a little bit more detail on the next page. Yep, but, uh, we can go to it. These buildings, Lionel, Lionel kind of dropped the ball here again. Oh, um, this. So you have the uh, Sofa King mattresses, which is a... It's a spoof on an SNL skit. If you say it really fast, you'll get a good chuckle if you're in fifth grade. Um, along with the, uh, the plumbing stores. <laughs> I'm sorry. The, along with the plumbing store there. Um, but I, like, once again, this is line the answer to the MTH Rail King is going away. These fun creative names. But, um, you know, a couple of the names that they have on these buildings, you don't see a mom buying her kid when names that are on um all right i'm yeah. sorry okay um, i'm a huge fan of that fireworks store too um apparently it's gonna have like leds so it looks like fireworks are actually going off and up the building how good that will look in practicality uh, we'll have to wait and see but um two hundred dollars i want to see i i feel like that has like an 85 percent chance of being canceled so uh, we'll see about that all right, we'll go ahead and uh, look at the rest of the accessories here. We have another road crew, another track crew. Um, Corey, I don't have room for the fireworks building on either my layout or in my wallet, so no, I, I don't think I'm going to be getting that. Um, and then the last big thing, you have the, uh, the frat house, which is uh, kind of funny if you're looking for some more uh, a comedic piece to put on the, uh, the layout. Yep. Yeah, Lego Geek. It's two hundred and nine dollars. I think if I think that's what most of the hobby stores have it at. Two hundred and nine dollars for that building. And then some more ads here at the end. American Flyer. Yeah, we can. I don't. We can skip through this. We're old gauge guys here. For, uh, oh, but we toy stuff. We don't discriminate. We should. We should at least. We should at least look at it. Um, let's go ahead and bring on our first guest while we kind of wrap things up here with, uh, looking at some other stuff. Sydney's trains, if you're watching, go ahead and, uh, hop on the zoom call. We'll get that sorted out as I just dropped everything off my desk. I'll go ahead and message him real quick and, uh, we'll start the uh, second segment of the podcast. Um, basically we're just going to invite a couple people to join us. And they're going to give their opinion, and then we'll just kind of talk trains the rest of the night. All right. Give me just a second, guys. It's kind of a brief intermission here. Again, as I was saying before, thank you for coming on tonight. And...
I mean, is it really prototypical if it has two rails? I mean, last time I checked, three tracks have three rails. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. There he is, Sydney's trains connecting to the audio How's today. Going? What's up? Can you hear us? Yeah, can, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, good. Okay, that's good. Can the live stream members hear him? Let us know. All right, I'm liking this uh, making fun of American Flyer right now in the chat. <laughs> There's something. I'm I'm not a uh, I'm an O Games guy as you can tell. But yeah. I couldn't tell. I I. Yeah, you can probably tell. I uh, I give credit to the American Fire guys. Everyone in the three or uh, three or O Games hobby is like trying to get to all the rails and like, remember, we still run our trains on, on three on three rails. rails. That's the that's yeah. the irony of it. These guys complaining about something not being prototypical. They run trains on three rails. I know. I'm like, you might as well switch over to two rail. Uh, o gauge at that point. I also give the uh, S gauge guys a lot of props because you really only have American Flyer making products for you. Yeah, th there's American Flyer, there's American, actually, I think American Bottles might have gone out of business. I don't know about that one. And then there's uh, MCH was making them, but now they're they're done with that. So, uh, Sydney, I know you have your own video out talking about the catalog, and then I, it's a great video, so I encourage everybody watching this when you yeah, so. it. Go check out his video. Put a lot of time and effort into it. Definitely. Um, if you just want to give us a quick summary of what you like, what your thoughts are about the catalog, that yeah, I'll I'll go over my kind of scoop on the catalog. Uh, first off, we have the S ones. Those have probably not those have not been done in like over a decade. I think it was like two thousand one ish, somewhere around there when they did them last and. It's amazing to see them again. People have wanted that model for a really long time. Uh, it's a very big model. It's bigger than a big boy, and that's just crazy. And when Lionel made it in the past, there was a really big gap in between the tender and the engine. And it's good that they're shortening that ga gap, as Ryan said, because if they didn't, it would look like the old one. And the old one looked horrible. I, I try to be honest. If you guys have ever seen my video on shortening a drawbar, it needed that. Uh, but these are really cool engines, and me being a technical person, I love the new boards that are going to be inside this engine. Uh, I'm doing uh, legacy upgrades to a couple of my trains, and I have to use two boards in the engine shell and two boards in the tender. Now, I think Lionel has shrunk, shrunk it down to one board in the engine, which makes a lot more space in the shell uh, and a lot more features with the whistles and the marker lights being able to change colors, which allows people to get what they want. So I'm glad that they're making this uh, this engine. And I, I personally like the, the version that has the uh, logo on the front of the calendar uh, scheme. I just think that's kind of neat. I, I always like something that just kind of pops and stands out, maybe not quite as much as the Tuscan one, but I still like something that kind of sticks out. Uh, from here, or if you have got any questions for me, you can um, ask. But uh, moving on, I also have uh, definitely a big interest in the four six O's. They they are definitely yeah. definitely. I think uh, Lionel's uh, gonna make. Uh, <laughs> they're gonna sell a lot of these, and there's gonna be a lot of them ordered. I um. I I let me look at my catalog here. I have one in my hand. Um, just um, as Sid is kind of looking through here, um, we just want to thank you again, Sid, for coming on. We have a, a, a couple other guests coming on as well to yeah. give their take, and then we're just going to talk trains for the rest of the night. Um, if you haven't seen Sid's trains, um, you're really missing out. He, If you're into anything technical um, with trains, um, this is your guy. You really want to talk to him and get to know him a little bit more. He might be able to show you some stuff. Um, I know I go to him all the time for questions, stupid questions that – you know, I don't know at all, and he's just like, wow, why is he asking that? But anyways, go check him out. He does some really cool stuff with his trains, and uh, back to you. Okay, so with the four six O's, uh, similar to RJ, I love the New York Central one. As I said in my video, 
there's something nice about just a good old black steam engine and especially the fact that it's whistle steam just makes it better there's just something about a simple steam engine that just always catches my eye uh, i have tons of models in my collection and i always just look back at the simple models i've had and still have that are just amazing now getting to something that uh, has been discussed a lot on this um, live stream is the color issue uh with like their photoshopping and Lionel messing up colors yes they are known for that and that is not a recent thing i have this here this is a lionel commodore vanderbilt i don't care if pictures were black and white in the past Silver does not look black on a black and white picture. Uh, this model was from 1996, and they painted this train wrong uh, back in 1996. It doesn't mean I don't like it. I love this model. I actually have two of them because if you look at this side, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but the paint job is just totally destroyed. So uh, that's uh, that's that. But yeah, these these four six O's are definitely. Uh, if I had if I had money to spend on these, I would buy one. But I am spending a lot of money on other things at the moment. Uh, since I'm a technical person, I don't need the new train for me to be able to uh, enjoy my trains. I, uh, I wish I was that way, being able to. Uh, not, I'm not good with electronics, but yeah, oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, I mean, you guys are talking about us uh, videos in the in the chat, but I I watch your videos and I'm just jaw drop the uh, things that you're able to do with simple electronics well not simple electronics but oh yeah to make it look simple yeah it definitely well that's the thing it actually is pretty simple i understand it. oh my it's god very complicated but uh, as uh rich melvin is uh one of the engineers for um the 765 and he made a video years ago on command control when it first came out and something that people are always like it's so complicated to hook up but he made it see he made it so simple it's as easy as connecting one wire because that's all you have to connect to your tracks. One wire, that's it. It's actually easier than DCS. Um, uh, not that DCS isn't easy. It's pretty easy. It's two wires going through a block and then coming out the other end. But uh, that's that with the uh, with the 460s. Definitely a cool model. I can't wait to see uh, your New York Central one when you get it. Uh, that's going to be really cool. I can't, I can't wait to see what whistle they put on it. Uh, that'll be interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm excited for it, too. And, uh, you know, it's going to have five different whistles in it if, uh, oh, yeah. if I don't like the default one. And, uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, you are. Um, I'm just going to say I'm excited just to see a Legacy engine that is relatively in my price range. So. Oh, yeah. Also, there will be tons on the market. There, yeah. We'll always order them. And there's, like, at least... 25 models on ebay all the time right when they come out and yep. they stay on there for a long time as well so yeah. there were like a lot of those on the market. um i know i the only thing that i can really compare this to you know as of recently with the whistle team and everything is the h10s that lineup came out with a few years yeah. ago and um, those are fairly hard to come by nowadays. yeah they're they're a little hard to come by i've been i've found a couple of train shows well of course not now there's no train shows but I found a couple, and they're always either like the, I think they're usually the Long Island, or I found the, find the Allegheny and something, I can't remember the road. Yeah, it was something like Pennsylvania and Shoreline. Uh, yeah. I could never really find the true Pennsylvania. Uh, moving on to the USRA, uh, I think they're, I think they're a Y3, I, I don't know actually the true designation, I think these are, are these Y2s? I, I don't, I think they're actually a Y two in some cases depending on the details but these are amazing models i do th i pretty yeah i'm pretty sure that pennsylvania did have one the lionel has made this engine multiple times and I'll, i don't think they would keep producing that model in that paint scheme uh, if it wasn't at least somewhat realistic maybe but uh i of course can be wrong maybe tim can uh, help with that <laughs> tim is yeah. literally the mvp mvp award to yeah. tim trains everybody yeah. and uh it's definitely cool to see Harry Hike uh, doing some work. Uh, speaking of the NW uh, J class that he that he's painted, nobody nobody has actually ever made a realistic paint job on them because it's supposed to be if it's going to be realistic to what it is today. Cases it's shiny like this one. This is a Williams scale J class. This is an engine that I'm upgrading to Legacy, and it's supposed to be shiny. It might be hard to see, but it is the light is just shining off this engine a ton. And it, 
this has the kind of correct darker maroon color. Um, I, I don't understand why everyone thinks it's supposed to be more of a matte finish because if you watch videos like Matt's Trains uh, loves the uh, uh, cla uh, number 611 and it's always shiny. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it's cool to see Harry Hike doing that and I love all the road names, especially the, uh, the B&O because I'm, I'm, I'm from Maryland, so Baltimore, Ohio, Chesapeake in Ohio, and CSX, all that. It's cool to see all of mm -hmm. Mercados. If there's a train in this catalog that I think is overpriced, I think it's this model. Uh, the Mercado, it, it, it's it's such a small engine, relatively speaking, that I think it should be a, a, a thousand or less. That That's what I would see. Because they, they've had this tooling for years, uh, and I just don't, I think it's overpriced. But it is nice that they're still making them, especially the 4501. Uh, which is a really cool model. And if you notice, some of these have different placements of the bell. Some have them on top, some have, some have them on the front. Uh, I think the, yeah, the uh, the Monon has it on top. And then <laughs> the, uh, the uh, Frisco has it on the front. So it's it just, it's slightly different. And speaking of, this is what, this is my Southern 4501. This is an old Lionel model from the 90s. Another model that I am upgrading to Legacy, and it uh, <laughs> and it, this is not totally prototypical. It's supposed to have some striping that isn't there, um, but this is what I wish Lionel would do. They they did a forty five hundred one in the green paint scheme mm -hmm. oh, a little while ago, but I don't think it. Yeah, it wasn't really right. Plus, I'm pretty sure this is what the tender is supposed to look like. This this tender, it, I've always noticed the Southern forty five hundred one tender is more stretched out than. Uh, the tender that is in these pictures. But I am no historian or expert on the uh, on their ski on the forty five hundred one. So correct me if I'm wrong. Um, now I'm just moving on to the diesels. I was just I was, I'm not a super big diesel guy, so I'm just kind of skipping over these. Uh, the uh, E sevens are really cool uh, to see. Uh, they're just big. Uh, uh, Big passenger diesels or freight, depending on what railroad. And people will buy the super base. That's uh, they will buy that. That that people love the sound sounds from Lionel. I, I just think they will buy that. I've seen them buy them with the Alco PAs, and they will buy them with these. But I uh, I also don't know why they made the the single stripe. It's kind of a it's probably like you said. I'm trying to catch up with an old run. And yeah, there's definitely some interesting paint schemes. The Golden State is cool to see, but I think K-Line probably did it better in the past. I, I actually have a K-Line set up here, this Reading Crusader. That's a really cool set. I, I love their passenger cars. The uh, Gen sets, that's another cool train to see. I, I, I picked one up, not for myself, but I was at a train show and I picked up an original one. And right when I picked it up, one of the truck frames just popped off because it was going to drop. And I felt so, I felt so bad. And the guy was like, I knew that was going to happen one day. So it's good that they're probably resolving that issue. And uh, yeah, but those are definitely cool to see. And I love that, the custom uh, graffiti work that's going to be done on the one. Legacy GP7s. Uh, that Santa Fe is pretty, uh, pretty nice. I, uh. I'm I've been I'm really prepared with my models here. This, this is my one of my GP9s. It's actually a very similar engine. Um, it has your favorite thick handrails on it. This is an old Lionel model, so uh, yeah, that it has that. So that's I guess a downer. But this is a I have a set of eight, this is an ABA, so it has a B unit, a GP9, and then two powered units. It's kind of it's just a GP9 but without the cab. Instead, it's just a straight side on. On the engine, which is kind of interesting, and this this engine, in my opinion, has one of the best horns that Lionel ever made, even with it being from 1996. Just so amazing. I I also have a TMCC GP unit, and I'll I'll clarify my handrail statement. I appreciate it on the older engine, like on the TMCC engines, when that's what that was the height of technology. Yeah. So you had the option between the thinner handrails and the thicker handrails nowadays on modern locomotives. I mean, yeah, we don't thinner them off with thinner handrails. Yeah, I understand your, uh, I understand that. Um, 
I'll, I'll get to something with the Lion Chief in a second as we're going through here. And yeah, there are definitely some funky uh, road names and paint schemes with these shark nose on the next page. Uh, that first, the E, J, and E, that I, I saw that and I was like, whoa. That, that was just, that was kind of striking because that's orange and green, definitely different. It looks like a, looks like a pumpkin or something. <laughs> Halloween train, guys. We got a Halloween train legacy now. Uh, and then on the page after with all the other ones, the, of course, that army army one. And I, uh, I had to look up what... Uh, that first one was I. I knew it was like a named after a river, but that's such a that's a weird name. I I don't I. Not I, for... I feel like most people know of the Monica Gila Railroad because of the heritage unit that NS has. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I didn't know much about it. I just knew about the river and all of that. I, I didn't know much else. It was kind of it's kind of an obscure name for me. And uh, something that I I, I think. Um, I give it to people that love uh, being super realistic, but with the whole Pennsylvania schemes, I feel at some point you have to remember that even if these are scale models, they are a model toy. It sounds weird to say that, but it's a model toy. Um, like for instance, this Commodore Vanderbilt I just showed you, this was uh, around the time when Lionel was transitioning from a toy model to a scale model. And it, it it's a, toy but it's a scale toy it, it's just you gotta remember that and, and nothing's ever perfect and that's something i think people need to remember with uh these trains in general J just so that they don't make the hobby either worse for others or so that they don't they're, not bu buy anything because if you don't buy anything then the hobby's just gonna fall apart they're toy trains they're meant to be fun yep. uh, i kind of brought that up in a few other podcasts at the end of the day as long as you're having fun with trains that's all that really matters yep and uh yeah another another like see about having fun i am a new york central guy i was expecting some new york central steam in the catalog but instead i guess we got this new york central the explorer which is definitely interesting it's definitely going to be a fun set for people to have as i saw it and i was like it looks like an alaskan railroad set it's with the blue and yellow it's definitely different i had to read the description on the side of the catalog to understand what it really was uh, definitely interesting uh and if I, I, for anyone that's listening, I'm not probably going to buy anything from the catalog straight up. If I do, it'd be buying it after because literally the newest train I have is, or the newest steam engine I have is 2005 and the newest diesel I have is probably like 2010. And that's, those are legacy um, diesels. And I just don't buy anything that's new because I just, I just like the stuff of the past because I think it's so amazing, the quality of it, not that stuff isn't good but there is a gentleman that's on youtube that's on youtube and he does videos every once in a while his name's tommy z trains yeah. and he's really big into mth stuff and he showed people the inside of an mth train from 2000 versus now the wires the fact that the wires back then are really thick gauge wires and now they're thin just shows how quality has gone down they're just um they're not making things uh to the standard that they used to be they're still nice models, just the standards have gone down. Post-war fans would say the same thing. Sorry, yeah. I just had to add that. Okay. Oh, I know, I know, I understand that completely. I have tons of, I, lots of my newer models are still toolings from older models, like my Hudson's, they're, they're the same as the model from 1937. And uh, just, I'm just going to skim over a couple more things. The, no, you're good. The, um... These two freight sets with uh, with the GP sevens at the front. What is that? Alakipa? Is that is that how you say that? I have no clue how to say that. I was just was curious. That first P uh, P and L E said it, it looks like Alakipa, but I am no uh, no expert on how to say that name. It's definitely um, but they're both cool, and I, I do like to see Lionel do sets with these really nice freight cars. Um, I think Lionel stepping uh, back up in the game with the freight cars, even though they're expensive, I just think that they're having to redesign things in the next couple of years, they'll be expensive, but then things will go back down because they've got their money back on the designing of the new toolings. Um, passenger cars, I'm just, there's so much. I just, there's, they're all the same. They're just different. Um, I'm just skimming over. There's a lot of the same paint schemes. Theater cars, definitely cool. 
if there's a car I know that Lionel messed up on with the paint scheme, it's that Norfolk Southern um, a Wi-Fi theater car. A PGH train fanatic got one, and it was like for like yeah. a maroon, weird, like Maryland red color. It like made made almost no sense. So hopefully they'll resolve that. And actually, I, I have something to say. I have some intel into why Lionel's paint schemes are not correct, especially like the H, the H tens. They had that really silver front uh, boiler front. Lionel, um, they changed their paint. Uh, the, the company that they use for paint, and the company that they use for paint has more. Um, I don't know how to say it. They have more just generic colors. They don't have a lot of. Uh, a lot of like i say like pastel kind of colors where there's a little bit of variety they just have like red white blue all just they have just the plain colors and that's why they're having to kind of figure things out and figure out what works best um like their grades are either super bright or they're super dark um so that's why like the newer trains have been um kind of different and I've been corrected on this so many times by a lot of um, people on the OGR forum. Lionel trains are actually, I'm pretty sure, made in Korea because there's a YouTube channel that shows off trains being made, and the channel is all in Korean, so I'd assume that that's where they're being made now. So from what I've heard from the OGR forum, a lot of the Lionel's, like all the molds are made in Korea, but a lot of the trains that are being produced in Korea are former K-Line toolings. Yeah. Because K-Line, I think K-Line was made in mostly Korea. Yeah. So a lot of the old K-Line stuff, that's the stuff that's being produced in Korea. Like the uh, the uh, Southern Pacific 442s, the, uh, what is it, the uh, 264s, the tank engines from the last catalog. Yeah, th those are like old K-Line toolings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but th that makes sense. And I think Lionel has like shifted a bunch of their production into a bunch of different places. And if I, I'm, uh, I had a lot of, even though I'm a Maryland person and MTH is a Maryland company, I had a lot of issues back when, when I was younger, I actually knew a lot for my age and I had issues with understanding, uh, the whole lawsuit thing with MTH. So I always thought, uh, MTH was trying to like shut Lionel down. Honestly, it was neither Lionel's fault here in America or MTH's fault here in America. It was the people over in. Korea and China just miscommunicating and by accident a design that was MTH just got sent to Lionel and there was a bunch of and or it was on purpose but it was kind of secret it was it was a lot of stuff it was a whole miscommunication that caused that and hopefully Lionel will actually get back their Dreyfus Hudson molds and their T1 duplex molds they'll be able to reproduce those models since MTH is uh, going out of business Okay. Um, a lot of great, great points. Yeah. Oh, so did you do you... the line chief? Mm -hmm. What were these points that you were gonna make on the, uh, the line? Oh, okay. Let me. The freight cars. I'll just say in general, all the freight cars are pretty nice, but they are no, over, over, they are no, they are just overpriced in general. But let me get to this line chief stuff. Okay, the cab forwards. I understand from a um kind of. Uh, a business standpoint of things it doesn't make sense with mth producing these models but lionel has never made um the allegheny as a line master locomotive so i think that was a good uh, good thing to do and a lot of people like the lionel sounds so not everyone buys the MTH stuff and then the cab forwards i just see it as another way for lionel to reuse old tooling and make, make a dollar it's that's an old um, tooling. The Line Master uh, Cab Four hasn't been made in a long time. I think it was again like 2005 when it was last made with uh, TMCC, and I think it's just another way. But I do understand the business side of things, and it's not totally making sense. And something to add about your the, the thing with the thick handrails and all of that is not only is the Line Chief uh, Plus 2.0 line uh, for the Lion Master trains and the scale diesels but with um a little less detail it's um it's about it's about lionel being able to uh, kind of bring back some old models um 
I just did a review of the Lionel um, Warhorse J set. And that J class is a post for tooling. And the Lion Chief Plus 2.0 uh, system in that whole series of trains is allowing Lionel to bring back these older trains, but put a modern twist on the inside. Um, for instance, they did the GG1 with uh, all the new um, electronics on the inside. And that's what I think these uh, GP7s here are about. They're, they're uh, giving you a more scale looking engine, but they're using the older tooling. So it's, just, it's just supposed to be cheaper. Uh, I do understand the concerns of it, of it of the whole being kind of a mis mishmash of, I can't talk right now, a mix of things, that's a better way to say it. It's a mix of different kind of models. It's a mix of scale, semi-scale, and, and then Lion Master which is just shrunk down stuff for the for you to run on sharper curves, which that's kind of what I was trying to get at. Plus, the technology in them is kind of old. Uh, it's TMCC, but with the Bluetooth system incorporated. Um, by no means do I uh, put that down. I've, I have like tons of TMCC stuff. I I kind of I almost took like a I almost took it personally when Lionel was going to stop supporting the electric railroad company, uh, saying that it was just obsolete. I just I almost took that to heart because I was a diehard trainmaster command control guy, and I just I, I couldn't I. It hurt me to like see them say that, but luckily, that man at Third Rail took over the company. And uh, from there, there's, there's not much else in the, in the catalog that, that just was something that I was looking at and interested in. Uh, the It's cool to see the Lion Chief set. I, I actually had no clue about the whole 765 thing. Um, and yeah, it's just definitely, then there's all the boxcars. I'm, I'm not too big into that because I just think it <laughs> they're interesting, but it's just for a small group of people, which there's no problem with that. It's just not my cup of tea. The uh, buildings, uh, definitely interesting. A couple of them, like you said, might not be produced because there's just not enough people wanting them. And uh, yeah, I, I'm 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 liking that Lionel is doing these kits, the building kits, because it allows people to have something kind of fun to do and just different from what they've done in the past. And that's pretty much about it. One thing, one thing I was just, I, did, I was thinking about before I was getting on here, something I was going to just talk about was, um, even though this is a Lionel catalog, I just have to mention this because I, I have no, there's no way for me to actually like totally guarantee this or have this verified. But I personally feel my collection is one of the, has a ver one of the biggest variety for someone my age. I have like trains from a bunch of manufacturers, uh, and I have Lionel, I have MCH, I have K-Line, I have Right of Way Industries that make they made my Nickel Plate Road 765 Berkshire here, and I just I want people to understand that if there's something in this catalog that you don't see you want, or Lionel's not doing something you like, go look at other companies because Lionel is now kind of a almost a monopoly in ways. Because they're the one big company left. Of course, there's Atlas and a couple other things. They're just not quite as big. But love on Lionel um, for everything that they do right. But if there's something that they don't do right, don't make that a problem for other people. Just keep it to yourself and then go find something else that you like. It's that kind of stuff that I think will ruin this hobby and cause it to just fall apart. Wise words. Um, very well said. I definitely agree with you there, Sid. Um, as you kind of wrap up your points here, we do have two more guests coming on tonight. The first one is Matt Trainlever9943. So uh, we'll take a brief intermission here and uh, I will get the Zoom ready so I can accept him when he um, joins. I'm just going to mute my uh, When he gets on, I'll just mute my mic and I just won't say anything for a while. Oh, that's fine. Um, we'll give him a couple minutes on the floor and then we do have one other guest. And then once we have all of our guests, they give their opinion. We're just going to talk trains for the rest of the night or until my computer dies, whichever comes first. So um, here is Matt.
How's it going, Matt? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Awesome. How's it going? All right, what's going on, guys? Hey, Sid, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. We gotta have a podcast just you and me, man. Oh yeah, we can definitely make that happen. Yeah. But uh, all right, this book. Well, uh, you know what? To be honest with you, I was telling RJ this earlier that you know what? what's going on. Yeah, oh yeah, I hear you. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. All yep. right, what's going on? Going good. How are you doing? All right, good. I hear about five million times of me talking right now. But, uh... For the uh, 15 people who are watching tonight, again, thank you for uh, coming on and sticking with us here, having just a nice live show. Um, pretty cool, something we've never done before. Um, so it's really cool to have all these guys together talking trains. And uh, in the comments, let us know how it's going so far. And uh, again, thank you for supporting the Model Train Talk podcast YouTube channel. And uh, we're just here talking train tonight. That's really what it's all about at the end of the day. So... All right, Matt, what are your takeaways from the catalog? Uh, what do you think about it? Stuff like that. Oh, that's why. Hold on. That's about you guys. Okay, there we go. I had you guys on the thing, and that's, that's why I uh, that's why I've heard me talk so much. But, uh, okay. All right, so uh, the catalog, uh, you know what? I was telling RJ before we started here that... Uh, um, we got basically the whole catalog the other day, uh, um, summit for LCCA. After that, it was like, you know what? I really wasn't too impressed with it. I just saw everything the other day. So for me, the main highlights really are the, um, the I'm sorry, what'd you say again? Uh, the gen set. There we go. There we go. Yeah, the graffiti UP, that one's really, really cool. I, uh, I, was, uh, um, I was really shocked when I heard about the plastic body. That, I mean, I, I talked to another guy. I was telling him that, you know what, I'm out. When I, when I first, the minute I heard that, I'm like, no, I don't want it. But now I'm Get a little more reassurance with it. I'm thinking, you know what, I'm going to give it a try. So I'm going to do the graffiti UP and uh, see what that's all about. But uh, we'll see. And the Pensy's calling my name too, but I'm only going to do one. So I'm going to do the graffiti UP. Um, I'm surprised you didn't go with the Pensy. Yeah, but, yeah. I was thinking about it between the two, but I'd rather do the graffiti UP. Pensy, I mean, it's a fictionalized scheme, which I love the fictionalized item, but for me, I, um, I'd rather just do the graffiti. The other thing I really like is the uh, Pennsylvania Hoppers. I don't know if wants to... Oh, you can go ahead and talk about them. I'll find them. Okay. Uh, those, those are actually technically an add-on to a coal train set that Lionel did a number of years back. So they, for the set, they made eight cars. Four cars for the set, and then four add-ons, and then this they're making six. So if you want all of them, you can have a four-car train. So I'm, I don't think I'm going to pre-order these, but I will get them eventually. I'll probably order them before the before they ship. But pretty uh, crazy. Those are beautiful pretty, cars. Yeah, but pretty crazy MSRP on those. $250 for two cars. Uh, they ain't cheap, but you know what? I looked looked at the pre-order prices, and it was one of them. Best I found was a hundred dollars. I think not too bad. Yeah. It's a little worse there, but a little bit better there. But it's still in cheap. Yeah, that's for sure. But uh, that's really it as far as the oh uh, the buildings. Uh, those I really like too. The buildings, those are really really cool. The funny names. Come on, man, those are really cool. <laughs> Can't go wrong with those. But, uh, I have to pitch.
mentioned that the fireworks building is just hilarious. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see the fiber optics on that that actually is produced. It's just hilarious that they're doing that. It, you know, uh, that one I like, and I also like the frat house. If if um if it doesn't meet Sid and Matt's expectations, they will do it themselves. And they will fix it up, and then they'll do a tutorial video for everybody, so then they can uh, oh, yeah. do it. So we do have one more guest. Um, just one second, I'm messaging him right now. So uh, another brief intermission. Again, if you are watching the podcast and this live stream tonight, again, thank you. Um, greatly appreciate it. Um, coming on tonight. And talking trains with us. Yeah, the reason why I was saying that I'm not sure if that fireworks building is going to be produced uh, in the last catalog. I know you were looking at it, Matt, the tooth bandstand. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was looking at that. When I saw that was canceled, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah, like it's I had a whole I had a whole scene ready for it. It was around the same price point, and um, I, I mean, I understand you know that would probably take up a lot of room on somebody's layout, but you know, two hundred dollars for a building, I don't know. Not even the uh, you know, MTH operating accessories over that much. No, but you got to think too, though the whole uh, all the features you get on, you know what I mean. But even so, I don't think it's worth the cost. But I, I mean, I, I would, that'd be one I would wait to see what it was like, and then, and then decide if I'm gonna go in or not. So the next guest tonight and the last guest, can you guys hear me? Yeah. I was messing around with Zoom settings. I didn't want to make sure I muted myself. Um, his name is Real Chief Seventy Four on Instagram. Go check him out. He has a great uh, post-war collection. Um, I'm messaging him right now, and uh, we'll get started. So we'll take a brief intermission. He's also on YouTube. I linked him yes, to yes, uh, I forgot to say that. Thank you. He's got some cool stuff post-war related, so it'll be interesting to see what um, he's got, but uh, we'll wait for him to respond. Uh, so while he's coming in, something I've always liked about his, uh, his setup he has is he doesn't have one big layout like I have. Mm -mm. It's not, and it's not just one kind of idea. It's two separate layouts. Ones, they're both, I think it's like two four by eight sheets, but in kind of like a T pattern. And it's just interesting how he's blended things together and just made it. It's just definitely fun. I've, uh, I've kind of gotten myself into a situation where I have to go more realistic. But my dream, if I was ever to have enough money in the future, would be to have a warehouse like uh, Richard Kuhn, the old, old owner of Lionel, have a warehouse, a car rail heat, where there's just layouts upon layouts. And each one is slightly different. One scale, one snowy, yeah. whatever, whatever it is. That's the dream, uh, you know, having your ultra, like, at least mine is at least having an ultra realistic layout and then having a four by eight piece of plywood with two wheeler track and all the operating accessories to run some of our trains. Yep. I've actually, um, I've actually met some people throughout my life that take it to the extent of building their house to the liking so that their layout can fit in it. Like they, they build a whole, they pour a whole concrete um, foundation and they put beams everywhere. So their entire basement is just open. Just everything is open for trains and they're not building around um, walls and stuff. If you go, if you go onto Amazon Prime, they um, TM Books did a great series about celebrities who have layouts. Yeah, uh, yeah. They did one about Frank Sinatra, and Frank Sinatra in his backyard built a whole structure for his train layout yeah. and built it to look like a caboose. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, and he and he has a real impressive layout. If you go and check out that video, I'm sure the uh, price value on those trains went up a lot just because it was owned by Frank Sinatra. Yep, yeah, definitely. Um, Neil Young used to own Lionel 
back in the day, and uh, he yeah, sold all of his trains for a pretty penny. Yeah, he actually still um, owns 25%. Oh, he does? He owns uh, Lion Tech, or what it, whatever it's called now. It's the technology and rail sound side of thing. It's all about it. He doesn't own the main part. I think the main parts of what, Guggenheim and, uh, Incorporated yeah, Guggenheim, or something? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the uh, I I um there's there's this ZW that is on uh, eBay right now and it's called the ZWD and it's it has basically a cab one controller built into the top of the ZW and it was a prototype from Neil Young's collection and I've wanted it for years it's it's been on there since ever since they sold his um collection but it's just way too much money for a little toy that for all I know doesn't even work. Yep. Seventeen hundred hours or something. Crazy. Yeah, it, it was it was ridiculous. You could cool, get it, but not that cool. Uh, I probably I probably could somehow make it work if I got it. Uh, I, I probably could figure something out, but I think I'm fine with my two four hundred watt right away transformers. I think I'm good. I think I'm good with transformers on the moment. Oh, we got the. Come on here. Oh, he's in. There he is. What's uh, up? Okay. Hey. How's it going? It's going pretty good. Uh, again, thank you for coming on tonight. Uh, we were just talking about how you have more than one table for your layout, and uh, you're yeah. a big you're a big post war guy. That's true. But uh, anyways, we wanted your opinion tonight. Uh, what do you think about the brand new catalog? I think it's definitely way better than the last one that they made. I mean, not that I have anything against volume one, but. I think the volume two catalog is totally way better. Okay. Especially, uh, I believe uh, you're an East Coast guy, so I I know speaking also as a uh, someone from the East Coast that uh, it was much more friendly to uh, the Eastern road names. You know, last catalog was packed with all the uh, you know SP SP stuff mainly. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, the thing I find most interesting, again, I'm going to ask you this question real chief. So the, I think it was the legacy um, engines, the, I'm blanking on the wheel configuration. The legacy 460s, are you interested and would you be, would you purchase something like that? I mean, I mean, because they're, um, they're, oh, they're, they, um, Oh my god, I can't speak today. It's all right. I mean, it's good that they're um they're compatible with O thirty one curves, so I would probably probably um pick one of them. Okay, okay. Uh, what would be kind of like the road name that interests you the most? And are you guy? Are you the kind of person who, you know, goes for something more realistic, or are you kind of just um whatever floats your boat? Um. I mean, I do like a lot of some of the newer things that, that Lionel is coming out with. And um, probably if I had to choose one of them, I would probably have to go with the New York Central because I don't have a whole lot of New York Central options in my collection other than the, uh, the New York Central huts and the, um, the drive that's made by K-Line. Okay, okay. New York Central gang rise up. Turn down these Monon people. Hey, what the heck, RJ? Gosh. Oh, that's <laughs> Yeah, well, j just to help you out, Sam, I'm a big New York Central guy, but my first, the first ever train set I touched wasn't actually my dad's set. It was a Mark's Modon diesel set. So okay, you know, okay, all right. I really had Sam outnumbered with uh, New York Central the Modon guys. I don't know. Here you are. St 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 Steve's an <laughs> impartial third party, I guess. I don't, I don't know. I'm in the middle. I, I don't. There's. I'm not a. I'm not a. I don't follow one single cult or anything. Hey, we're, it's all just fun and games here on the live stream. Um, so, again, we're just going to, um, again, thank you for everybody who has watched tonight. Um, really appreciate it. Um, you know, this channel, our, our main goal is just to talk trains. So we got some, some familiar faces and some new faces here. So if you haven't already, go check out Real Chief on Instagram. And he's got a YouTube page now. Uh, pretty cool stuff that he does with some post-war um, items. Um, and again, we're kind of wrapping up the catalog review and we're just going to have kind of a live podcast session, just talking trains. So, um, again, thank you guys for coming on. Um, greatly appreciate it. So, yep. Okay. Oh, you know, you're good. Go ahead. 
Um, so, real cheap, is there anything else in the catalog that you liked or are thinking about getting? Possibly my number one train that I really want out of this catalog has to be the, um, the um, Line Master Southern Pacific Cab Forward. Uh, okay. Like... Oh, did you guys still want the catalog up? No, I guess, I guess it's alright. We're not really looking at it right now. Okay, alright, cool. I just want to make sure it works on the on the live stream too, so I'm kind of waiting here. But uh, how's everyone hanging? How's everyone doing? Got any anyone uh, doing anything significant on their layout, or uh, just kind of? Uh... I just I've been working on my engine house. Yeah, how's that going? Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? It's going. Uh, I gotta do the windows uh, for the royal main metal piece. Try not to swear. Oh no, you're good. <laughs> uh, but no, it's uh, it's going good. I gotta figure out the doors too, cause it's not hitting the bottom limit switch. I don't know what's going on with it. After okay. that, it's going pretty good, and after that, I'm doing nothing. I'm just in the in my H10 today. Okay. Okay. So you guys, are, you guys are talking about that, so I'll interject that. <laughs> so can I ask, kind of? Um, with the model, did you is it like motorized at all, or um, did you add anything extra to it? That uh, uh, your own I, twist. I took out the LEDs that were in it because it only had eighteen, and I upped it to twenty one. So I uh, so it's got forty two LEDs in the uh, uh, the middle section there. I saw it on Facebook. So, uh, it looks really good. Yeah, it's it's really pretty cool. And then the motor, the doors that actually. The reason why I bought that specific kit, the, the motorized doors that comes with the kit, so it's really okay. Okay. Um, so I gotta figure out the the limit switch. So I'll get that figured out. But it's really cool. I like it a lot. Okay. I actually repainted it since I put it on Facebook. I repainted it all gray. So Why'd you? Okay. Why'd you repaint it? Because the white it looked it looked sloppy. Like it didn't flow. You could see like where I painted it, where the where there were low spots, where I stopped and started the brush. You could tell it was it was just it didn't look very good. So I um I re repainted it all gray. It looked a lot better. Than okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, I know RJ has got a ton of progress done on the layout. Do you want to tell us a little bit about I that? A movie about that. Yes. Sir. Yeah. I saw that as well. That was that was a great video, RJ. Yeah. Do you want to? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Uh, okay, my internet connections. Uh, yeah, it's a little slow here. He's cutting out a little. We'll just give him. We'll give him a second. Okay, uh, I can talk about a couple things. Sure. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know I've I've been doing a lot of LED stuff with my passenger mm. cars. I uh, these uh, 21 inch uh, daylight cars from Weaver. They're kind of, they've been a little bit of a different project. Since they don't have interiors, the light starts just shining down at a black base on the inside of the cars. So I've had to, um, for now I've cut white strips of paper that I've cut to fit inside the cars uh, perfectly. Uh, but I'm also gonna be working um, with my neighbor today, cut out some vinyl. Uh, stick it in there and see that, how that works. And that's been a fun project to, project to do. I have one more car to do, which is the dome car, which that's going to be kind of different because there has to be light shining out of the top. That'll be fun. And another thing, I, I'm working on my elevating the outer loop some in places. And also, I'm looking at switching track systems. While I love fast track, I just... My room is just it gets, it gets loud in here, and uh, I think I'll have a little more flexibility uh, with the different track systems. I, currently, I'm looking at their Ross custom switches and their track system. Be I, disappointed. What'd you say? You won't, you won't be disappointed. Oh yeah, I know they. Uh, uh, their stuff is nice, and uh, I looked at uh, MCH scale tracks. That's and, junk. Don't buy that. <laughs> I've looked at it and I've, I've understood that it's not the nicest stuff in the world and I've also looked at Atlas and Atlas is just expensive. I, I don't think I'm going to go with that. I'm probably going to go with Rat. Uh, 
Ross so I can uh, mix um, Dark Grapes and Ross since they look very similar uh, so I can get the best um, setup I have. Of course, as I said earlier, I'm doing a bunch of electronic work, adding legacy. And something to notice, I'm not only adding legacy to train, but I'm ad adding whistle steam and maybe even a blowdown to a couple trains. I'm working with a person named Brute Bannister on the OGR forum, and I know him on Instagram. So that's a, those are big product projects. And then for Rail Chief, I, I, I still have the, uh, the 2055 or 2065 on the back burner, so that project's not gone away either. I do a video on that legacy upgrade. Oh, I guess you better you better show a tutorial. I want to. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm gonna look forward forward to it too. <laughs> yeah, I I, uh, I have to be careful with what I do because I don't want to give away secrets, but I also don't want to <laughs> cause anybody to break their stuff because I, I don't want to make people have to buy tons and tons of electronics. But I definitely will do some videos and postings on the forums to show how I did all that. Okay. Well, yeah, I've seen, I've seen Brute stuff and I watched him do his upgrades and I can actually do that to mine. Every yeah, I, I'm not quite doing it to the standards he does. He does like factory factory style work or even better. I'm going for more uh, the upgrade standpoint where there's neat work but it's not uh, a, a zip tie every one inch and, uh, and like color coded wiring. It's just if it's if it's behind the scenes, it just needs to look decent, and I don't need it to be perfect. It just needs to work. At the end of the day, it's really about um, what makes you happy, and you know, if it works for you, then it works for you. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Rail Chief. Um, what kind of uh, we were kind of talking about track earlier? Um, have you always been a tubular guy? Uh, I know I know I run tubular. Uh, or have you ever had experience with fast track or any other of those systems, or do you have always been tubular? Mostly just some um, tubular and uh, fast track. Okay. Um, I guess the question is, what do you? I guess you you mainly run, uh, at least from what I've seen on uh, Instagram and YouTube, you mainly run post war. Sometimes. I mean, sometimes I run post war. Other times I like to run modern era Lionel and MTH and um, a couple Williams engines I have. Okay, okay. Um, I'm gonna ask you a question um, that um, might be fairly difficult to answer um, on the spot. But what? No <laughs> okay. Uh, what problem? Um, what? What really brought you into post war? Why does that um, pique your interest the most? Well, um, when I was a kid, I used to really enjoy watching the I Love Toy Train videos with um, Tom Comas and his son Jeff. And, you know, just by watching those videos, I've always been inspired how creative you can get with things, companies like Lionel or MTH or Lieber, Atlas, and what kind of layouts you can make. So I always, I always mentioned my... Um, my dad, I always wish that we had line out trains. And he met, one day he mentioned to me that we do actually. And one day he took me down to the basement and showed me, um, uh, what should we call it? I mean, he showed me like a huge pile of original post war line all engine, the rolling stock. And I was really amazed of, you know, how much stuff we have down there. And I was really intrigued. Oh my God. <laughs> so, so much going on in my mind up mind here i just don't know you're good you're good it, it happens all the time yep uh, but anyway but anyway i was um i was always really intrigued to figure out to find out what kind of stuff you know my dad had when he was growing up and um he's got a real nice collection he needs a couple of even a couple of um pieces that i've never really seen before like for for example the what was it? The twenty-two forty-three Santa Fe, um, how, a a unit with the the B unit. Okay. Yep. Because yeah. I'm the, I'm a, when I was a kid, I've always seen um the Santa Fe's with um the two power two power units like um power unit and dummy unit. Yep. So, it's a very uh very classic look, um especially in post war post war diesels. And over the years, I just wanted to learn more. And thankfully, the, um, me and my dad got interested in these train conventions. So we 
we started going to them like when I was a kid, and whenever we go to a booth, booth or um, talk to somebody, we always get lots more and more information that we never knew before. Like we, we were like absorbing things like massive sponges. Yep. So that's what really got me into collecting. That's awesome, man. Um, glad to hear. Um, I'm sure a lot of people out there watching. Um, and who will watch this later once it is published would definitely agree with that statement. You know, um, I love toy trains. Um, I know when I, f I remember when I first interviewed RJ and Corey, uh, that's what RJ said, um, that he always watched those. And, um, we've had podcasts with all these guys before, and now we're getting to know you as well. It's very exciting. Um, so, um, kind of as we're wrapping up the show tonight, we started at seven and it is nine o'clock. We have been going two hours um it's been a really great show definitely enjoyed it um let us know in the comments if you enjoyed it as well um this is kind of our trial run of a, a live show we're gonna see how it goes um so i i think i personally went very well again thank you for all you guys coming on tonight talking to us here and everybody in the chat below kind of sticking out and just really watching um, all of us and supporting our cause for the model train talk podcast um, at the end of the day we just want to talk trains and get to know each other that's really what it's all about um, so as we kind of wrap things up here does anyone have any closing thoughts speak now or forever hold your peace um, we actually have a question from the chat oh we do we so, all right uh, what do we have gfw asked uh specifically to uh, rail chief over here but also to all of us as a group where do you where do we go to uh, train shows if we go to any at all? No, I can't. Uh, uh, it, someone, because I'll start it, or a rail chief, you can go, it's up to you. You go first. Okay. I, I've i been to, okay, the first train show I ever went to was the York train show, and that exposed me to a lot of stuff. Um, all I can say is it is massive for a show, for a train show. It is there's, uh, there's like three or four main uh, private halls that are that are uh, private. They're actually they're the ones that are open to the uh, public, where you can go in and just buy trains from uh, private sellers, and that's where you get all the, in my opinion, you get all the good deals and just talk with people. Then there is a hall that usually has a layout in it, usually the National Capital Trackers. And then there is the Orange Hall, which has all the big manufacturers, Lionel, MTH, used to be MTH, uh, Atlas, that's, that's going to keep happening for years to come, uh, Atlas, uh, a bunch of other companies, and all the dealers themselves, the big dealers like Henning's Trains, uh, Train World, all of them, and a bunch of little, little companies that most people don't know about. Uh, for instance, ETS uh, is a a company ran out of the Czech Republic and they make O gauge uh, models that are styled like LGB trains. Uh, that's uh, that's how uh, uh, Matt you see trains put it in it's really a really good descri description. It's a LGB styled O gauge train. Plus they make these little um, motorized uh, Volkswagen Beetles, which is really cool. I have a couple of those. And then there's also small shows. Whether I'm part of a a group called the WBNA, and they're they're a more local group that is part of the TCA in my area. And I've been to a couple of their shows, and they're just like in a recreational, like a community recreation center in like the gym, just uh, discussing. Or well, there are, there's actually two parts of them. They have a whole discuss discussion group in one room, and then the other room is the dealers, and that's just. Those are the shows that I go to. I love York, but it's also so cool to be able to talk with people that are local to me. But yeah, th those are the shows that I go to. And uh, I, if you, if there, if there's any way in the future when York is up and running again, I definitely recommend going to York. All right. Uh, next. Oh. Yeah, it looks like that the new Pennsylvania state regulations. Yeah. They came out today. It looks like that York in the fall. Yeah, York in the fall is going to be canceled and likely in April as well. But we, we, we'll, we'll be we'll, back. Yep, it will be back at some point. Uh, so me personally, uh, especially, uh, there aren't too many training shows on Long Island. 
And now I spent basically four months on Long Island and then eight months down in DC, um, between going back and forth between home and school. Um, so I, there's one that happens three times a year on Long Island, and usually all three times it happens, I'm away at school. And then there's the greatest show, uh, greatest hobby on tour, um, and that usually happens when I'm at home. Uh, it takes place in uh, the Virginia, near D.C., and that usually takes place when I'm uh, back on Long Island. Um, so I've only been to a handful of train shows in my life, but I love going, so very fascinating. Um, and really hoping I'll be at the next York whenever the next York is. Same here. All right, uh, Rail Chief or Matt, you guys want to go give your uh, question here? All right, go ahead. Um, what kind of train shows have you been to, or what what do you do to get involved? Okay, so I'm basically from like um somewhere towards north north east Jersey. So the only train show that I usually go to is the one in um, Edison, New Jersey, at the uh, New Jersey Expo Center. Okay. And um, like I said, when I was a kid, I I started going to these conventions with my dad. It's been like a blast. I mean, you get to meet new people that you never really interact with usually. And um, you can see new and rare stuff that you've never seen, like in a video or a catalog before. Or I shouldn't say catalog, like maybe like train magazine or something. And it's, um, I think it's a really good experience. I mean, I feel like there's some people out there that are getting a little bit of a disadvantage when it comes to this stuff. I mean, it's really good to have hot because usually you find some people out there who are getting hooked to too hooked on, you know, like video games or computers or iPads. And I feel like it's really good to get out into the community, community and go to a convention like that because it, you really learn a lot and, um, well, you know, you get to see things that you don't really see too often. Yep, I would agree. Um, ever since I started this, I've learned so much. Um, Sid um, literally redesigns his trains. Matt um, brings a you know a creative twist, running everything on his layout. Um, RJ's got a little bit of everything on his and Rail Chief. Uh... I'm, the I'm the pretty face. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Sorry, I, I take back what I said. And then RJ, he's got the he's got the uh, the post war stuff, and uh, you know um, Matt and RJ have great chemistry. So I was able to meet Matt more um because rj was like we got to talk to matt he's a really cool guy so and i said the same thing to with sydney and now i i told rj i said we got we got to talk to real chief sometime i've been waiting for a long time so um it's really great to have you guys on i got us all yeah got us all uh, great show else you should talk to uh matt and i uh know him pretty well as dj's of his train yes yes you gotta talk to him come on come on get him back gotta talk you gotta talk to him Okay. Oh yeah. I won't go up to go to Europe. I need to have more Long Island represented on this. Uh, more Long Island Railroad represented. Oh, and he'll get you Long Island. <laughs> he'll get you the subways. Your name it, man. Uh, yeah. I, I something that I um I, I thought was cool. Was the, uh, I think it was yesterday he did, did a video on uh, in Pacific M10,000. Yeah, uh, that that was that, that was cool. Get that. Uh, if I had the room, I'd get it. All right, so RJ, we got to take note. This guy's next on our long list of uh, potential ideas. We have to have Rail Chief back on. Yes, the, uh, yes, that too. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm. I mean, we should really do this more often. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, um, I definitely enjoyed the uh, the live thing, um, even though um, I do have the tech technology set up back here. It's going crazy. I got I got two studio lights. I got I got a charger. Um, I mean, it's all, it's all, it's everywhere. So, but yeah, that's been, yeah, yeah. I got, I got two computers right now. Yeah, it's crazy, but, um, I really enjoy it. And it's, it, um, really makes me happy to see everyone talking trains tonight, which is. I personally think your final goal, like if there's someone that is your goal to have on this channel, it's Eric. Yeah, Eric Seal. That, that's yeah, your goal. We got to build up a little bit more. To, yeah, I know. I know. But it's not it's Eric. I'm, he, that's why I've been trying to spread the word about you guys. Like you saw, there was a decent amount of people watching. 
and I'm just trying to spread the word because this this is so gr- this is great. This is like amazing. This is like not happened specifically for the O gauge hobby in a long time. There's I think, what's, the, what's the other the podcast? Don't they do more HO stuff? I think. Uh, what is it? What uh, uh, Ken somebody can't remember his name. Uh, uh, what's new this week? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Take pictures from boxes. Yeah, I, I love, I, I support all that, but this is this is definitely something that's new, and I we need to support it more, and we need to spread the word. Uh, you got you, uh, both you and uh, RJ and Sam, you should go on the OGR and uh, gotta put you gotta put your okay. stuff out there. Okay, so who, oh. all right. So yep. who wants to hear a fun story? RJ, I'll let you tell it. I'll let you tell it. I felt so bad. I felt so bad. Go on to the OGR forum. You got flagged. And I did post about the podcast, and I was banned. Like instantly. And my IP address, my IP address was banned from creating a new account. I I know why. This happened. I didn't hear that. This happened to me when I first started my channel. I for like a week I was posting stuff about uh, my channel on the forum can't direct it like directly talk about and like try to like um advertise you have to do what like eric siegel does and what i'm starting to do you have to like write an article about something you're doing and then at the bottom just link yeah. the video so i, try, you- I, yep. I tried doing that and um and i, I guess i didn't i didn't do it well, that, enough, that's kind of sad I, I don't want to sound you did like, it the wrong way I don't, I, don't yeah. want to, I don't want to sound wrong about this, but I, there are, there, I think there's a couple, how to put it, some people that are just a little too grumpy that run the forum. Yeah, and, it, and yep. it doesn't help that there is a, uh, there's one other O-Gage uh, podcast out there that posts once a year uh, who is sure. a former sponsor. So, uh, <laughs> I asked him today if he did a, a podcast on the catalog. He said no, it's one of his, he's not doing it right now. Yeah, yeah. Maybe um, I think we should try. That's definitely something you should try and talk with the, uh, with the OGR and figure out. Yeah, I sent I sent I sent an email just like talking to some about it. That they get a response. So it's good. Yeah, it's. You got to call them up. <laughs> you got to you got to uh, what's the word I'm trying to look for? You got to uh, yeah, uh, spam or something. Yeah. Well, we'll so. See. We'll see what happens. Well, yeah, we just we just gotta spread. If that doesn't work, we just gotta spread the word and just yep. get it out different ways. Yeah. Um, One person at a time. Yep, definitely. I'll, I'll put it up on our YouTube channel, Model Train Talk Podcast. Thank you. I'll have to. Yeah, I'll make appreciate it. We we've got we've got over two thousand subscribers between the two of you right here. Yeah. Yep, I I got like about eleven hundred. <laughs> I got like twelve, I think. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I only got like five hundred and now. Yeah, I think honestly, honestly, I, I'm not trying to throw a, pit, a pity party, but I believe I have the lowest subscriber count um, out of everyone here. Um, I don't think. Well, I hit 200 and then it went down to 195 this evening, but it, exactly. That's that's my goal with the podcast and. That's right. Incentives, guys. Come on. 100 subscribers by next Friday, which is the 24th on this channel. I have to get a Monon uh, Monon free card. I'll put it in the description after this live stream. Yes, I want more. That's what you got to get. And one more thing I kind of want to add. RJ, do you mind telling... uh, Do you want me to tell the story of how you and Steve met? Is that okay? Um, yeah, you can tell it. Okay. So, basically, like, my goal with the podcast and everything was to get people talking trains to get to meet each other eventually someday, right? So, I got to meet RJ and Corey. They were my first guests. Um, it was a good show. And then the second interview that I had was with Stephen Coffrell. Um, really great guy. Um, really cool layout, too. Uh, very friendly. And so I don't remember really how it started, but anyways, RJ texted me one day and he's like, you know, what's Steve's contact information? I was like, here it is. And then they ended up finding out that they live close to each other locally. And so RJ and Steve have been going back and forth, hanging out, um, you know, um, and stuff like that. And so 
they've already formed a bond together. And so this past weekend, I don't know if you saw Corey's video. He did a, a, a fantastic job really um, showing Steve's collection and whatnot. But they all three were able to go together and meet up at Steve's place. Um, and it was just really cool for me personally to see that, you know, this is already starting to come together. Um, if you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Go visit Steve's channel. Go visit... Um, uh, RJ's channel and go visit Corey's channel as well. Um, Corey did film the whole video um, and it really displays Steve's uh, collection well. And Steve has some videos up as well of some of his personal items running on the layout too. You got to go check it out. Great thing. Um, the reason I bring that up is just because I wanted to show that, you know, coming together as community and, you know, getting together and talking trains even during a uh, pandemic. Um, obviously, they all um, were safe about it, and they really thought it through. But that's that's my final thoughts. Anybody else have anything before we end tonight's show? That's right. Get your orders in right now. Monon, oh, Monon in the chat. Yeah, Monon, Monon, right now in Penn Central. Speaking of which, I think it's really good that they're um. They're trying to keep away from the less expensive flying all cars and doing more, you know, realistic models. Like you said, with the Penn Central or the um, new hoppers that are coming out, the cab forwards, the Jeeps, and a lot of the great new accessories that are coming out. Thank you. Agreed. Um, Sydney, any closing thoughts before we uh, end just tonight? Showing, uh, just, just showing the power um, of the train shows and also what you you just mentioned uh, uh, with RJ and Steve, just uh, I, I literally, tomorrow and Friday, I am literally going to a gentleman I met at the York train show and I'm building, and I'm building his layout for him. I, uh, I'm wiring it, I'm adding all, he's collected a bunch over the years and just has to put it all together. And it just shows uh, the amazing connections that people can make through this hobby. And just anyone watching, keep supporting this channel and as and spread the word about this channel and all of us just about all this entire hobby just spread the word so that people can understand what this is and that it's a really really good hobby i um i think rj you you're on grand central on instagram and there was a fr there was somebody on, on the group that was having some issues with people not treating them the right way because yeah. they were in this hobby and it's just, it's just, it just wasn't right. It just, this hobby is so amazing and we just need more people in it to support it. Agreed. All right. I mean, yeah. I was just piggybacking that, you know, that conversation. It was, you know, I'm in college now, but it was, it was you know, like middle age, uh, middle school, high school age kids. And, you know, they, they were scared about, telling their friends that they like trains and you know that was me when i was in middle school, high school. i'm not afraid to admit that you know i i hid this um and at the end of the day but like you you enjoy doing what you if you love and enjoy model railroading you know if somebody says that that's stupid and that's weird you know you may not realize it when you're in high school and middle school but i really realized it when i was when i left high school that you know those people don't really matter and, and if, they, if they want you to change what you like and what you think then it may not be the right people to be around well said well said um rail chief is signing off uh he said his uh battery was low but it's okay because we're getting ready to end it here so if you're still watching um thank you for coming on again please make sure to check out all these guys' channels and stuff like that um, building each other up. Um, I believe RJ has linked them in the description of the podcast. Everybody's channels are below. So, you know, Sam and ours and uh, Sid, Matt's and uh, Rail Chiefs, you know, all great make, all make amazing videos. Uh, if you aren't subscribed to them, really go out there and check them out. And, a, and you, oh, yeah, go ahead. Subscribe to this channel, Model Train uh, Podcast. Uh, subscribe to it right now. Yeah, right now. Hit that, hit that bell too while you're at it. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you get the notifications. Uh, Every Friday at 7 p.m. It's, uh, it's, it's necessary for you to do that. Yep. All right, Friday cool. Night, next video. This Friday, yep. the 17th. We were able to meet with Greg, who's the vice president of the Nassau 
There you go, RJ. I said it right. Uh, Lionel Operating Engineers Club. So um, that'll be a, a great podcast. Um, everyone, it, it just keeps getting oh. better and better. So. RJ, yeah. You know that uh, Pittsburgh and Lake Erie set? It's called El Quipa. El Quipa, okay. So, so I, I, I almost got it. I just I, I, I turned that on. I turned you guys' thing on right when he, right when you started saying it. I think it's it, equipment. Equipment center is the, the, the road name. Nice. Uh, one of the road names. There you go. All right, guys. Right. Awesome. Off, guys. You guys take care. Yep, you too as well. I'm going to go ahead and end the live stream. So, again, right. thank you guys for coming on. Uh, you guys right. can. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Take care. We'll see you.